Five, four, three, two, one. They've landed. You're in the right place. Flush. Online, on the web, and on air. All over the world. Talk radio. You hear us, we hear you. Yeah, good evening and welcome to the show. My name's Suzanne, and he's still typing. I am. <laughs> but who are you? Uh, I'm Chris Andrews. Is <laughs> he? <laughs> so I'm Suzanne, and he's Steve, and uh, we're here. He's in one of them moves. Be careful, he's tired. Right, we've been up since uh, our, well four, four o'clock. <laughs> So, and we are knackered, so uh, bear with us tonight. Um, we're here on one request only, because last week's guest wanted an open mic night. Uh, we was going to, uh, because we, were, we haven't been home long, we've been home for about half an hour, and uh, we was going to leave tonight until next week, but uh, I got moaned at last week, didn't I, Andy, 707? So <laughs> He's dropped the 707 this week. I know, I've gathered that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's just see who's actually in the uh, chat room tonight. <laughs> he said, hey, I thought it was my idea. Yeah, what's your idea, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, we've got uh, Corvus Paranormal, which I assume is PJ. Uh, we've got Ghost Rider 2873, which is our John in Norfolk, our JW. Uh, we've got Bill Seven. Good evening to you, Bill. And um, we've also got... Um, Manky Hypno Man. No, Mank Hypno Man. I will get that right. One of these. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not Manky. <laughs> Mank Hypno Man. He's going to have to put a hyphen in between. We've also got Michaela Bowden uh, of Club Zero. And uh, we've got Andy, whose idea it was for tonight. <laughs> um, what are we going to talk about? How Alistair. Do do you oh, we'll sort that it's one out. Alistair. <laughs> Alistair, yeah, that'll do, Alistair, right, okay, um, and we've got Emma, who's in the chat room, but she's also here, so uh, she's going to be talking, telling us the observations shortly, um, how did our day go, it was hot, it was stuffy, we was inside with no air conditioning, no. wasn't it Steve? Yeah, you, 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 you. Poor old Peter, he's get, he's nearly 60 and soon soon Nick's his, his, his <laughs> fan. <laughs> you know the ones that clip on the table? He had one of them and she nicked it. I didn't, he offered it me. <laughs> she did, so, she nicked it. But apart from that, it's been good, but I'm well, shattered. Well, when we left and got in the car, the temperature said 39. Yeah, so we drove with the windows open. <laughs> And it soon became 26. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was 25 all the way along the M- M1. So, it was. you know. Now, well, still, you know. Well, the, we started our day at uh, when we got in the car at 6 o'clock this morning. Yes. At, at 15 degrees. Yeah. So, it was quite warm. It was warm. Yeah. So, it was really warm. So, morning. I don't know what the rest of the week's going to be like. Now, the topic for tonight, as I said, is open mic, which it was Andy's idea last week because he didn't want us to miss the evening wasn't that right Andy and uh, basically um, tonight we, we've invited Chris Andrews along with us you can speak hello 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 <laughs> hello again so um, you know uh, basically if you were uh, we're going to be talking about bits and pieces where we've been where we haven't been what we've done and what we haven't done and uh, just generally Bent uh, across to each other. I don't yeah. mind talking about goals and spirits, but not my ghoulies. <laughs> and we'll, uh, and, uh, and uh, they said that they would be asking us questions from the hub. Yes, they we, would be. So uh, uh, in the other chat room, so you're welcome to ask us questions. Doesn't matter what it, what it is, yep. we shall have a go at answering it. And if we can't, we go, Chris. And Chris is going to ask <laughs> us some questions nah. as well. And if I can't, I'll say, Emma. <laughs> 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 well, we, we always guarantee what we can't answer, we can always bring to you at some stage. That's yeah. what I always guarantee. Oh. So, don't forget if you lose well, connection tonight, yeah. I'm on Google tonight, so I'm hoping they'll behave. Yeah. And he's we lost, are, and he's lost connection already. We, we are, um, actually, uh, 
subject to live stream. So if we lose you, we will just restart it and to come back to you. If you lose us, just do the same thing again. Just <clears throat> you have to be careful of my throat tonight as well. So uh, it's been a lovely hot day. I'm assuming it's been hot, hot everywhere. So uh, across the uh, UK. Yeah, very well. So uh, I hope you've had a lovely Sunday. Maybe a few barbecues or something instead of a nice Sunday roast. So. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having a barbecue, but I live in a flat. <laughs> it's only a problem. Downstairs must have been having a barbecue because the room smelled nice. All right, okay. So you're buying air fresheners. <laughs> yeah, I suppose like so. Smell of pork. Angie, are you back with us? <laughs> Speak to me. Put a flu from the barbecue out the window. So <laughs> hopefully you're back with us. I like hopefully, it. and also Andy's supposed to be ringing us up um, to tell us about how he got on at Carl House Fault. I am. That's what you said last week. Uh, 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 didn't you mention the votes as well? And the votes, yeah. It's all good. Hey. Last night. A good invention. Yeah. What was it? What did you see? Do you know when you, you, know, when you want your, your camera? You know, your great camera. Andy Mercer. And you want them to pan. That is you, isn't it? So or is it Tigger? Cracking invention. Or is it another Andy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Who are you? More knows. Yes. yes. <laughs> are you Tigger? Not me. Tigger. No. Mercer. Cooper. No. no. And you. Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> no. 707. No, because he hasn't been. I'm him. lost. Andy Pandy. Who? <laughs> I don't know who you are then. Is he one of your guys, Chris? Is he one of your guys, Chris? We've only got Andy Cooper. Oh. Enlighten, enlighten us, Andy. Enlighten, enlighten us. us. Have you been on the show before? Are you again? I'm lost. It's me, really. Oh, he's a wind-up merchant, he is. <laughs> he's a wind-up merchant. I'm going to remember this, Mercer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's but it. yes, I had that's a good day today, actually. That's it, show's over. <laughs> yeah, show's over. That's it. We're all going home. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We're going out for a barbecue. Night tonight. <laughs> We're going out for a barbecue. Barbecue and beer. Oh, yeah. oh, I don't know. Well, it would have been better than that McDonald's we just had, wasn't it, Steve? It, it was. It, it, was uh, uh, it was cold. Was it? Yeah, cold, I had a cold chicken. Chip. Um, I liked it out in the sun for a bit. Chicken tikka wrap. And if I didn't have the it, it, well, chicken chili wrap, but if I didn't have the chili on it, it wouldn't it wouldn't have tasted. Well, that's why it was cold. It was chilly. Ha ha ha! <coughs> Guys, it's gonna be one of those weeks. Looks like I better wrap that up, Anna. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, chicken. Please, but I don't think it. No, we, no, we didn't. Did. We didn't go for that one, John. You said you would tell us about it, Andy. You said you'd get it all together. Yeah. He's been asleep since he then. He said he'd send us the video. <laughs> He's less than funny. Yeah, he did say he'd send us a video. Right, anyway. And he still says he's got an, he needs to upload it. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. He's procrastinating. Excuse me? He's he, tired. <laughs> <laughs> he's procrastinator, whatever the word is. <laughs> you, you got the word, I was just surprised it came out of your mouth. <laughs> I'm tired. I thought this show was like Ghost of Praise or something. <laughs> About it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ghost of Praise. <laughs> Ghost of Praise. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we've, had a, we've not had a bad week, though, we're getting obviously. To no, we're we're not bad at all. No, we've not had a, no, we've had a, we've not had a bad week at all, actually. Nice. We uh, managed to get ev everything we needed to do, got it all planned, done and in place, and it all worked today. Yes, it did. So, Which is a bloody surprise, completely. <laughs> See, normally, when you plan everything, there's always one thing goes wrong. Yeah. Always. I know there's one thing I'm looking forward to. What's that? My bed. I am shattered. I, I didn't plan on that one, so that's going to go wrong. I am shattered. <laughs> I really am shattered. That's, that's going to go wrong anyway. <laughs> where have you been? Right. Where have you been? Where have you been? Long Eaton. Ooh. Yeah. Long Eaton? Long yeah. Eaton. Near Nottingham. I think you were just eating some at Shelter. <laughs> I did when I got back. <laughs> yeah, and it was chilly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been near Nottingham. You've been down Nottingham? Yeah. All oh, right. What are you doing down there then? MBS. All right. Are we talking anything for it? No. All oh, right. <laughs> I did my it tarot was, while it, I was there. Uh, oh, yeah. It was. Oh, it was. Yeah. Yes, it was. Why weren't we there? I don't know, because it was in Nottingham. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, but, yeah. Because you two were sniffing downstairs barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that was the Eva stick. All and right. Steve was doing the uh, UK Shadow Seeker store. UK Shadow I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah, I've heard of them. Really good, they are. They are. Yeah, well, I like them. Trouble is, they keep getting everywhere. Yeah, everywhere I go, I keep seeing <laughs> posters. But, you know, like where? Yeah, like where? It says wanted. Like where? Like wanted. where? Oh, well, I'm... Um, <clears throat> Police station down the road from me. <laughs> um, on trees outside the shop, the broken window. Is that watch big enough? <laughs> no, that, that's a Galaxy Gear. It goes with my phone. All right, it, it's, it's my phone. Oh, one of them jobs is it? It's that's got a camera on it. So when I'm pretending to be looking at the time, what I'm doing, I'm filming. I see. Mm. Secret spy, eh? Like uh, Morecambe Winter Gardens. Oh yeah. Like, right. take the mic away from your mouth. Yeah. Not that far. <laughs> Because apparently you're Can blurring. Can you like just have it that far You're away. blurring. Yeah. N- yes. You're not Oasis. <laughs> What's the story? <laughs> Morning <laughs> glory. <laughs> is, is that better, PJ? Is that better for you, PJ? Is it because my voice is so big and gruff? I'm booming. Is it booming? Booming. booming. Is it booming? Yes. Do a boom, yeah. your baby. Do a boom. Yeah. Yes. But when he's at the meetings, it's not booming, is it, PJ? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> isn't that right? Oh, that's oh, my job, isn't it? Give us a song then, Chris. <laughs> that's it. Uh, <laughs> no. Is it? Who? No. No. Uh, right, okay. Where have you seen these posters? Yeah, where have you seen this? Po- right, Morgan Winter Garden. Yeah, Morgan Winter Garden. Yeah. Um, and what's your opinion of, of the gardens? The, well. I thought they could have trimmed the roses a bit, but <laughs> yeah. I liked it actually, Mark and Winter Gardens. We've actually booked I thought it, it was all right. for our anniversary on the 8th of November. Have you? Yes. Yeah. We'd have a little buffet. So what are you doing, an investigation type of thing all for your right. anniversary? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's different. Not, like that. No, no, not our anniversary, the anniversary of the UK Shadows. Ah, yeah. We've seven, done our anniversary. Uh, <laughs> I'm on the wrong show here, are not I? <laughs> seven years to the day. Yes. Seven years. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthdays to no, you. No, November. November. <laughs> I'll come back then. <laughs> and I'll finish the rest of the sentence. Yeah. Uh, Sheffield Police and Fire Museum. Yeah. I've seen them there. Mm. Did you know they changed the name? Yeah. Is it uh, Police and Fire Sheffield no, Museum? No. We talked about National uh, something service, isn't it? Emergency, Emergency Museum. Services Museum. Museum. I wonder why I can't get hold of them. A, a museum or something. Yeah, oh. they've, changed this, they've changed the name from yeah. Fire and Police to um, Emergency Go- Services. Google it, Emma. Well, it's been a while That's since. They've got their own resident group there, haven't they? Yeah. Um, yeah. Again. Spirits. That's right, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I contacted yeah, them. Yeah, yeah but you book off of them, don't you? Back. You book through them, yeah. We did, yeah. yeah. I was still, uh, I'm still waiting for them to contact me back, and that's been about a year and a half, two years now. And still yeah, they, they it, do it, it, it can be hard getting hold of her. Yeah, yeah. I must admit. Very busy yeah. people. Yeah, but uh, anyway, um, so you've had an easy week? Yeah, it's not been bad. It's, you know, it's been a warm week. Was you out last night? Um, what was I doing last night? What was, I doing? what was I doing last night? Yeah, well, you obviously weren't investigating. You weren't investigating. No, 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 no babysitting. Right, when was the last yeah, time you investigated? Bull in the thorn. Bull in the thorn. Oh, yes, okay. I remember yeah. the bull in the thorn. No. <laughs> that, that was... Uh... <laughs> <coughs> nice venue. Well, First visit. Right. Last one, last one as well. <laughs> what was the plan? <laughs> well, the plan was, as far as I was aware, was to split into three teams... One team to cover each floor, let's say the cellar, the middle floor, and the upper, the upper yeah. levels. Yeah. It didn't work that way. It and we were supposed to start at what time? Uh, half past eight, nine <laughs> o'clock, something <laughs> like that. I think it was about half past ten, and we all had one level. Yeah. And we kept a level head on that is beyond me. <laughs> but, um, you know. I was, thought you were going to walk. I was close to it, yeah. yeah. I think a few of us were, and we had decided, I thought, you know, because it, it got, we was under the impression that um, the you know the place would be closed off to us and mm-hmm. all that. You know, we get access to this, access to that, and then um, we found that there was well, you guys were there. They, yeah, they, you know, were still serving people. They kept open, and obviously, it's business, of course. It is. Oh but yeah. I thought it was a little bit unfair when obviously you're paying their asking mm. fees and you're there, and then you know you sort of get what well, you stumped out here. What can you do? When you Did you ever waiting. get the cellar? No. 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 What about the rooms upstairs? So no, we didn't get them neither. No. So I mean, there's a lot of people who might go there. And they might think, oh yeah. yeah, I'll go there. For me personally, and this club will probably go again. But for me personally, that's the first and last for me. Yeah. I won't go back again. Well, I must admit, we we actually drove when we were driving there. We thought to ourselves, for a Saturday night, it's unusual for a pub to yeah. do that. Really? Yeah. Well, it is, but because it's in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Obviously, these people they guaranteed. What you know, we were guaranteed that we'd uh, it'd be closed by about quarter past eight. Yeah. 
Um, and Michaela, who's on the chat room now, she's the one that, you know, she's booked it. So she got all the confirmation. Yeah. About quarter past eight. But obviously by 10 o'clock, half past 10 even, they were still serving food. And people, yeah. You know, which I don't, like I say, I understand it's their business. But if someone's already booking, you shouldn't really book it out. No. I don't think. Or, you no. know, and state the fact what you're going to get and you don't. So, yeah, this is it. Uh, and if you're not to bad mouth them, it's just the way it went for yeah. us. Yeah. You know? Um, so it, it, yeah. I mean, it turned out all right. A good night at the end, mm. you know. Um, uh, PJ helped him massively. You know, he was on your on your site on the uh, chat, pe- room. chat room there. Yeah. Uh, he helped massively. You yeah. know, everybody pulled together. You know, and you guys were fun with that kettle. <laughs> um, you know, kettle switching itself off and off and doing things on command. It was really strange. <laughs> Yeah, you know. the, the, the kettle suddenly coming on its own, and uh, Chris mentioned it, and, and Sue went, "Kettle, t- turn off," and it did. <laughs> yeah, right, right on cue. Right on cue. <laughs> then we had that iron, uh, branding iron that was mo- all the lights started flickering, yeah. and the branding iron started moving on its own. But it was moving. If you've got something heavy and it moves, obviously it's going to come to a stop after it because of the weight it proceeds to have. But this was just swinging, and swinging mm. no sign of it being let down. You know, so yeah. Anyway, the light, the emergency lights were on a different circuit, but it's just a bit weird how it sort of went with it. Yeah. So paranormal, I wouldn't. Not, not and he's just said that they wouldn't wouldn't do that if somebody had booked a party or a wedding. If you book a place, you expect them to act professionally. Well, the, the, yeah, exactly. And the thing as well is, I mean, we were going to. Some of us went up there earlier and booked a meal, so they bought food from there. Mm. We we was running a little bit on the later side because we had to pick people up and things, so yeah. we ended up calling at McDonald's thinking we're not going to get a meal. We could have mm. done after all. Yeah. And then we got told that they were making three or four trays of sandwiches for the gold hunters, and we never saw a one. So no. I, don't know, I don't know what happened to them. No. You know, so um, I don't know. But we had uh, guests that were staying in the haunted bedrooms who joined us on the night, and yeah. they thought it was all right. But then, the, you know, to, no disrespect to them, but their husbands was a little bit inebriated, yeah. so they couldn't join in. Yeah. Um, so with the promise that we could do their rooms, but because their husbands was drunk to a degree, yeah. they, they sort of crashed out in their rooms. Mm-hmm. They was off limits to us, so yeah. we couldn't do it. So it was a little bit of a... It was. I think it was, you know, when we got there, we had the initial plans of going. When we got there, everything was disorientated. We were given the wrong information and everything was just thrown into the kettle, you know. So you made what you could of it. Anyway. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, after a while, you know, I think with us sort of cursing and stamping our feet and spitting dummies out, pulling it on the floor, putting it back in my mouth and spitting it out again. Yeah. Um, it turned out into a, all oh, right, I, you know. Yeah. For, for most people, I think it but, turned out all right. But that's to your credit that you, that you made it through. Well, I mean, like I said, uh, the, the, the team guy, you know, the team pulled together. Uh, PJ helped massively as well, and he, mm. with his, you know, he was comical, and he kept, you know, kept things together as well. Um, and we just did what we did, and you have to make the best of what you've got, the situation that you've got. And I suppose for anybody else out there, any paranormal investigation you go, before you go there, you've always got your expectations of what you're hoping to do, or what you're hoping to achieve, or what you're going to give people. And then sometimes, from that experience, and experiences like that in the past. It can all go up in your face on the, when you yeah. get there because you don't know what you're going to expect. So even when they might tell you one thing when you're booking it, sometimes it just goes straight out of the water and it doesn't happen. So you've got to ad lib mm. and do what you can, you know. Um, but I think well, it is about your frame of mind. And I think at one stage, I think we was all ready for voting for leaving and going to Ian, yeah, you know, and doing something else. And you know, um, but we, we gave it a little bit longer, and uh, you know, they seem to enjoy it from mm. what, what they got of it. I think. Now, what is Ian? Eam is a little village, um, Derbyshire village. It's the plague village. Oh yeah. And, um, and uh, Eam is a it's, it's a rural place. It's, it's fantastic, it's lovely, mm. lovely place. Full of green, yeah, Derbyshire, full of greenery. It's on the way to uh, is it Chesterfield. Yeah. Um, and you know it's got the Celtic cross there and all that in the churchyard, um, and that's where. Um, there's a, a little cottage. There's a row of cottages, and the, the main one's called Plague Cottage, and that's where our friend Maria lives at Plague Cottage, and um, that's where the plague started up here. Anyway, mm. a, a tailor was lodging there called George Vickers. He was residing there, and he was a tailor. He ordered some cloth from London so he could make clothes for the residents, <clears throat> and um, it arrived damp, obviously, over a period of days. Um, it contained fleas from the, the rats in London, so he hung it up over over the fireplace. Within three days, he died, mm. and it spread and spread and spread. Um, and then the, the Reverend was uh, William Mompesson and his wife Catherine, and they arranged. They got the villagers to sort of congress together 
and stay together and they put boundary stones up and around so people might know the story boundary stones with vinegar in these holes and people would leave coins and the neighboring villages would come over take the coins go and get them provisions things like that um and they opted to stay rather than it spreading you know some people left and obviously yeah. and whatnot um and then one of the stories goes where one of the residents uh being delirious from i mean the plague she drunk a gallon of um fat you know fat type of thing like dripping yeah. or whatever and she drunk that and she was cured of this plague mm. so for years and years and years it was believed that that could bacon fat it were, uh, that that could cure it it's only like recently that they found out that wasn't the case at all it was a certain strain in the dna so that tell people have this certain strain in your dna that means that some of your relatives at some stage in the past have been exposed to the plague or to whatever else yeah. you know and yep. you developed an immunity to it so that's what she yeah. must have had yeah pj said uh, never go in the summer because they have a campsite and it gets very busy well they, they, they do a lot of things up there i mean we go in a you know in november time and they have like the bonfire and they do a rat parade because they're all mad on the rat you know the big rat um so they do this parade and they walk through town they hold these torches like the villagers on, on a witch hunt that yeah. type of thing yeah <clears throat> It's it's actually it's, it's fantastic, you know. It, it's it's got to be for me. It's it's the most surreal place I've probably ever been, ever, you know. And we've investigated. I mean, we stay at Play Cottage regular. Um, Maria's one of the team now. She's joined onto the team for a bit for a while a while back. Um, and and you know we stay there regular. But we don't go up to do like paranormal based things. No. We just go up there to do uh, like friends go and have a few drinks, stay over. But we have it. I mean, originally we 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 started off investigating it, you know, and. Uh, Got some good results, and then we've moved around in Ian, um, and we do a lot of Ian Museum now, which is it's probably nothing paranormal, but because it's a relatively new building, but yeah. it's you know it, I think it's the theme behind it, and the, you know the artifacts that it has inside that sort of gives it its correspondence mm. to things, um, and then we're, we've been working on um, what's the building called the Mechanics Institute up there as well, um, so we're waiting to hear back from the uh, the committee where we might end up sort of taking that over and hosting it so for, for funding for them yeah um and organizing events like on a regular basis there but we have to guarantee so many groups turning up a year yeah for them so we're, that, that's got to go through the committee yeah we've been waiting for like, 12 months for that now right so uh, but oh, it's lovely i'll take you yeah i keep saying i'll take you. i know you do i'll take you Ian. <laughs> Ian. <laughs> but don't go in the summer and it's getting summer well it's, it's, it's great it yeah. is busy, you know, and people, I mean, sometimes we, uh, we was up there not that long ago, and you get all the people, all the, you know, all the public coming through, tourists, and they're there looking at all the signs outside, and I'm in the garden, I'm in a cigarette, and I'm talking to them, and, I'm, mm. you know, and I ended up speaking to somebody about the park, because they're on about, oh, it must be scary living in there, you know, oh, so, yeah. well, it's not my house, you know, but, but, no. so actually it's not, people come here, they look at the signs and associate it with death and horror because yeah. of the plague and things like that, so, but, but you're not really a, a pretty, appreciating the fact that they're loving the house where people was caring for the people that were sick yeah. the losses that they felt because they the loved ones and also it's not just about the plague all the wars it's been there through all the wars and people who've died of natural causes and all other things since then so there's a lot of love in that in the area in the house so so i was telling them about it and then we ended up talking about the paranormal and giving people email addresses and things like that mm. i heard him walking off and say he was interested and i think his wife said yeah let's not go again <laughs> <Something> <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you said about the artifacts in the museum there. Uh, Andy was saying Leeds Armoury is uh, is very new, but uh, there's, there's so many haunted items in there. It's, it's amazing. Well, that, well, that's it. I, Have you ever been to Leeds Armoury? Uh, um, I think the, I think the club has. I haven't myself, and I'm sure because it rings a bell. The, the, ring, uh, the armoury. So I I also believe as well. Like you, you might not have to have, you can have a place that's got artifacts in it, but they, they might necessarily need to be the genuine article. Mm. I think it's a representation. Um, you know, let's say, if, you know, if you found a pound coin on the floor, it's not the original pound coin that was first made or something, yeah. but you'd know what it were. So if somebody from the time period maybe saw that, you know, they'd re it'd be a recognised mm. object or something. But then so again, association. there's been places which um, take, for instance, Bolling Hall, I think it is. Yeah, we've done where that as well. All the stuff in Bolling Hall doesn't belong to Bolling Hall, it's been brought from somewhere else. Yeah. Yet it's still haunted. That's you know, right, yeah. So it was a stronghold, that, in Bradford, the Bolling Hall. Yeah, so stronghold. basically, all the people that are connected with the um, with the furniture now in Bolling Hall, you know. So you just don't know, do you? Because the Bolling Hall story is, isn't there, that there's a, a stone which looks like it's got blood in. 
Yeah, that's the floor. Yeah. Yeah, that's the floor. The story was a maid, or the yeah. have thrown herself, or she was pushed. Yeah. Hit the deck. But they've had it tested, and tested, and, and it's tested. Not. Yeah. And uh, it's not blood, but they don't know what it is. But Dave McC- McElroy, I think his name was, um, the guy that we used to book from, mm. he was saying that what had happened was that there was a party or something in back in the day, mm. and this bloke had a... Had a bit of a Barney with his missus. They went home and it happened at his place. Not, oh, not, not, not actually, actually in Bonin Hall. Right. But then again, as some furniture come from his place yeah. uh, you know, over all the years. It makes you think, doesn't it? You Is know, it how possible? do we know? It's, you well, know. well the, we, did a, we did an investigation. Uh, what you're saying there, mm. it makes sense because we did an investigation for, uh, years and years and years back. Uh, in Stockport, in a place called Holsworth Mill. Yeah. And uh, we had these mediums with us who we had from Stockport Spiritualist Church. And um, and they kept getting the name Jack and Martha. Mm. Jack and Martha. So, you know, that's in Reddish in Stockport. So we thought, well, in the, you know, and to give it like a, a roundabout date, I can't remember what the date were, but we, we sort of figured that the name Jack and Martha in that time period would be quite popular. Mm. There'd be a lot of people with that name. Found out that on the, on the census records, there wasn't. There was just one Jack yeah. and one Martha yeah. that that resided in in Reddish in that period, mm. um, and they had nothing to do with Oldsworth Mill. They worked at Reddish Vale Mill, you know. So oh, why why are they being picked up here? But then we found out later that when the mill was dis- uh, you know taken down and you know it was re- some some parts of that mill was brought over and used to build Oldsworth. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's just a bit uncanny where them names came up. No, no, no. and that sort of fitted together so like but like it's, you were it's saying. a bit like the stone tape theory isn't it? Yeah. if you've got a, a bit of uh, furniture maybe something's yeah. stuck with it well, yeah. you get shops don't you that have got artifacts yeah. in and then suddenly they, they, you know, they, they announce that they've uh, they're having poltergeist mm. like activity or you'll get people that have bought let's say iconic figures from shops that look like totem poles or yeah. sort of from the witchcraft uh, voodoo type gear and then they start having uncannily they start having these accidents and you know but is it because it's related to that or is it because it's it's the thought behind it you know there's a lot of weird incidents I mean the yeah. paranormal obviously as you guys know and everybody out there knows is just about seeing ghosts and spirits it's well, this is it. so many different things and you think Ooh. when we did um crompton mm. mill a few weeks ago didn't mm. we steve yeah. um and uh, we can't get back there because he's decided to go on holiday to america for, yeah, for, <laughs> for, a, long. for a couple of months <laughs> <laughs> but anyway we'll be going back when yeah, he gets back. To come back but he's he's got the keys to the old macclesfield castle right and he's framed them and everything, hasn't he? Yeah. And we had them on the night to see whether we could pick yeah, anything you up. Did actually feel that energy coming through oh, the glass? Oh yeah, through the actual glass, because I didn't want to take them out of the glass. He said, "Did you?" I said, "No, I didn't oh. want to do that." But um, you can actually feel the energies coming off them. You and think how many people have held them? Precisely. You know, there were, I think time. it was eleven keys, wasn't it, Steve? Yeah. You know, and uh, he said, "I'm the king of the castle. There's no castle anymore, oh. and he's an antique dealer. So yeah. you know, yeah. he, he was given them. It'd be amazing to see them and have them in your hands, wouldn't it? You yeah. Know, yeah. Something so, like that. but uh, yeah. R J W in, in Norfolk, he said, uh, "Why do you think people get a lot of reports of hauntings when people are doing renovations?" Yes. There it's, well, it, it's different scenarios, and you know, where people it's, it's believed or it's a general uh, a thesis like that. When people do renovations, let's say whoever they're getting hauntings from are usually believed to be previous occupants, or you know, or something on that nature. Mm. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, and um, things are like when they've passed away. Obviously, the house as it is was the way it was intact in their day, and that's probably how they like things. Yeah. And then when you start renovating, you're moving things around. It's like it's a kind of interference. Do you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like you're interfering with their domain. It, you know, that's how it's believed to be. Um, you know, and it's the same principle as well. Why people, you know, would turn around and say, "Why would a castle be more likely to be haunted than a modern day house?" You know, when people died in both. You know, but mm. you know, again, that's a, that's an easy explanation itself. But you know, and that's the that's the attributes around it really, and it's people's <laughs> conceptions. But the true answers. Is, Probably not available, so we have to go with the answers yeah. that we can find at the moment in time. The ones that make sense, um, you know, um, 
we create theories from these things. They all fit into place and they make sense and therefore at the moment in time for everybody, we're assuming that this has to be the right case. And there then, you go, John. Have you got uh, any more questions for Chris? And, and then some Muppet comes on with a brilliant idea and changes it all. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> but some, you know, someone would say to me once, why is that castle haunted and why is that house not haunted? But yet people were killed in that house and people died in there, you know, or whatever is it. Is it because the castle's old? It's that old. It has to have ghosts in it. It's, mm. Well, you know, it's, well, no, not at all. That's got nothing to do with the fact, the age. You know, yeah. it's the yeah. building materials yeah. in which it was made from. Yeah. The castle. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, in the days, the cas- a castle, the the building materials will contain what's called oxides, and the oxides are very much like in the modern day cassette recorder. Yeah. So iron oxides, they record. So it's not a case more that the, uh, the, the it's haunted. If they contain oxides, it'd be more of a residual energy, residual nature, because of the magnetical recording, you know, uh, of such, and then maybe played back over mm. times and things like that. Even when a building's been t- completely taken down and destroyed, you know, yeah. maybe it's the atmosphere and all that. It's it's, it's just strange how you know well, you need physics. They, and they've got that, that in uh, Staley Bridge, haven't they? When the whole the old hall was demolished, yeah, uh, part of Lloyd's Bank was actually yeah. was actually built from the stones from the hall. Oh, right. From uh, <laughs> G- Gulls Hall. From Gulls, Gulls Hall, hall yeah. 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 Have you ever been to Townley Hall in Burnley? Uh, uh, not to visit. Been past it, it but not, not in yeah. it. They have yeah. a they have a bear um, in Townley Hall. It's a big bear, or they used to have anyway. Uh, it's a big bear, and it's like it's a big stuffed bear. It was a real bear, you yeah. know. And it's massive. It's on the staircase, and at night time, <clears throat> it's been reported. Um, that the bear walks, you know, walks the grounds and everything, and people have reported seeing, you know, like the old, the old English soldiers. You have red coats and oh, yeah. you have the, the crisscross and the tunics and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the whole garrison, you know, on the on Townley Hall, and you know, I'm just walking around and doing all the routine patrols and things like that. Mm-hmm. And the bear attacks, and, and this, and this whole reports from there, you know. And yeah. I, I remember all that from when I was a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alistair said, uh, Worsley Old Hall is a great place if you want something local. Have you ever been? I've not, no, I've not been um, to Worsley Old Hall. I no, know I loads that have been. Yeah. You know, uh, See, that's the thing as well, isn't it? What I look at as well. If you, There's places, there are lots of places that are, are unique and great venues, but when when you go to these places, are you picking up on an, you know, on, um, alleged paranormal activity or are you picking up an energy from previous groups of visitation? Oh, this is it. That have been there before, because yeah. if you if you go somewhere and let's say in the earlier days people were more frightened of things than what they are today, because there's a better understanding of things today than what they yeah. were. So you can guarantee at some stage some people would have gone along absolutely crap themselves or something. Yeah. Something would have happened. They felt a draft on the back. They heard a creaking noise and they would have expressed more negativity. And that's probably more liable to be captured in the area than than the positivity side of things. It's easier to destroy than what it is to create, isn't it? Mm. And sometimes, and we've done this as a test, you know, we, we've tested the negative and the positive test. We did this at Buxton and uh, Pool's Cavern. We tried it, and it and it works. And it's a the, you know, it's a theoretical, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, Fact. Yeah, it's a research basis. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know, it, so you could be picking up with other people. That, and it's no longer theory. It's uh, it, well, it is fact. Yeah, we proved we, we proved it. You know. We well, how many it. times have we actually been to a place, Steve, where another group's gone in and opened up so many portals and not closed them, and ended up with spirits there that shouldn't be there? Loads of times. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, loads of times. We got called to one of them. Some year, PJ will remember that. Actually, he was on the on the chat room there. He'll remember that. Uh, there was a place at Maze Artro. Mm. Which is something you know. It's it's a shame, really, that everybody out there never. You know, some people out there may have been to Maze Artro, but so unfortunately, people won't get to go there anymore. But I think it was one of the most unique uh, group training areas. You know, all, all, you know, groups from all over the place. You know, and the guy was called Malcolm. He used to run it, and it was an RAF. You know, it was an airbase RAF Maze Artro, and um, somebody had been down there and done the you know Ouija board, and. Um, we, I know who it were, we know it were, but obviously it's not for me to say, but uh, we got a call um, from the from the owner, Malcolm, to say all oh, this was going on and all that was going on and that's not what he wanted it to be. Yeah. And we had to go down and sort it out the best that we could. PJ and the group, you know, he was with us on the time as well, so I'm sure he'll write something and they'll remember that. Mm-hmm. But we yeah. did, hopefully, we did what we could do to sort it out and uh, the best that we could and we it was all right from then on, you know. So, But did we sort it out? Or was it because we sorted his mind out against it? He's, he's, he's it? Know, you know, so. Yeah. 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 Also, uh, Michaela said, "Where's the old hall? Don't do invest." If you remember, Chris, uh, you drove down there a few months ago. Oh, is that where? Is that where it were? Is that where we went? Where, where oh yeah, you came. 
Right, yeah. If you guys are going to be booking Wesley Old Hall, yeah, she's correct. Yeah, she's correct. Yeah, yeah. We went on the, yeah, we did. We went on a whim just to uh, try it, and uh, I thought, ooh, look at this. No, we don't do it. Yeah, I forgot that was the place. Right, yeah. well, we're going to take a bit of a break, okay? And uh, after this break, we're going to hand you over to Emma, who's going to do the observations. So we'll see you in a bit. The Paranormal Intelligence Gathering Services Ghost Store is a one-stop shop for all of your ghost hunting gadgetry needs. Run by ghost hunters for ghost hunters, the shop is filled with all of the latest in investigation equipment shipped in from all around the world, from high quality digital dictaphones to EMF pumps infrared illuminators to laser grid pens, CCTV equipment to data loggers. All of our equipment has already been imported, so you can buy it safe in the knowledge that there will be no hidden costs. And with our postage promise, you'll never pay more than the actual postage price. So visit www.the-pigs.co.uk forward slash ghost store. Yeah, welcome back. Well, uh, that's the um, ghost store down there at PIGS, which is Paranormal Investigating Gathering Services. That's PIGS. And um, just to give you an idea of what PIGS is like for service, we ordered two EVP recorders on Thursday at around 3 o'clock. And by 4 o'clock, they were in the post, and we received them by our pass one on Friday. That is what you call service. It is very quick service. This is it. And to prove it, there they are. There they are. They're quite good, aren't they, Steve? Yes, they They've are. They've got There's four gigabytes. Yeah, you've got four gig of, uh, of memory on there. Yeah, and you can actually transfer it over to your computer with the uh, USB thing. Just, just plug it straight into your computer and transfer all your files over. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you so it's really good. You haven't good. got to sit there and record it for one day. So, so, yeah, so uh, we bought a couple of them. So, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was uh, after Tim very uh, very nicely uh, give us one to, to play with. Yes, give us one to test out. So uh, that was nice of him. And so we found something that that he's never done before when he did it. Yes, <laughs> we we recorded on it. And uh, can you pass me that mic, Steve? Is it? <coughs> Hold on, let's swap mics because uh, she'll be having the mic in a minute anyway. That's all right. Here we go. Swapsies. Swapsies. We we was recording on it, and when we were playing it back, there was this interference, wasn't it? Sort of like crackling. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't in nobody's hands. You know, it was just uh, apart, sitting on the side. Yeah, apart from which, it, it's supposed to be uh, resistant to that. Yes, it is. Idea. So, you know. Mm. but uh, Did you try putting it through, um, is it Gold Wave? And clean it up a bit. He cleaned it? it up a bit. Yeah. And... He said it's some, it sounds like something that maybe a CB radio or something in the oh, vicinity, yeah. but it only does it once. If it was something like that, he said it would be a constant yeah. thing, you know. So we found it happen again, so I've sent it to him to have a listen to, because he said if it happens again, let me know, because he said I've never ever known that to happen in all the time I've been using them. So maybe we've caught something, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, we'll strange. go into that a little bit later, because uh, we'll let Chris know what we we did about this house cleansing and how it, how we've left it sort of thing. Yes. You know, so we'll go into that in a minute. Uh, well, a little bit later on. But, uh, you know, but there's more to come with Chris um, and yes. with ourselves talking about places that we've been to. More and girly dancing. And this, that and the other. <laughs> I'm hearing Roxy going scatty, so I think he's giving us some jip out there. <laughs> Winding her up. But uh, anyway, we're going to go into the observations. So uh, in a moment, it'll be over to Emma. We've got all the news right here. Don't go away. Right then, Emma, what we got? Okay, first up, um, a warlock warns of magical war at the World Cup. Antonio, Var Antonio Varquez moves, moves to protect the Mexican team from rival sorcerers and predicts the wide, widespread disturbances in Brazil. Mexico's self-proclaimed um, Grand Warlock has predicted host Brazil will win the World Cup and that violent protests will continue during the month-long event. Antonio also claimed the World Cup would uh, not only be a battle between football teams, but also a magical war between sorcerers trying to influence the results. Mexico's first game is against Cameroon at the 45,000-seater arena 
in Das Dunas in Natal in June 13th, um, the day after the competition kicks off. It's evident that in addition to a football war, there will be a magical war, says Mr. Varquez. Imagine that on June 13th, which is St. Anthony's Day, and that we have all the advantages to win against Cameroon, 3,000 warlocks that have pay been paid to be there at the stadium. So we always need to counterbalance this situation. He added, Brazil is going to win, and all things have been made so it can be that way. I'm going to tell you something now. Watch out for the social disturbances that will take place in Brazil. They will be strong. Helped by his assistants, Mr. Varquez performed rituals to protect Mexico's team during the World Cup. After Cameroon, Mexico will play Brazil on June 17th with their final group, um, group A game against Croatia on June 23rd. The World Cup, which runs from June 12th to July 13th, has been got uh, dogged by protests over the cost of staging it and delays to the construction of the stadiums, which might tie in with the with the um, what is it the witch the warlocks and everything because he did warn there's going to be disturbances so maybe. yeah um, our friend Graham down at the uh, what, what is the group he runs um, the Athagard isn't yeah. it Athagard yeah Athagard now he's always going on that this year is going to be a bit of a a gathering, isn't it? Yeah, they've uh, they work on repairing and putting things right. Yeah. Have they get disturbances in areas and they go uh, through the uh, actual plane and find out what's going on and, and, and try and put it right. And he he was always saying that that 2014 there's going to be a gathering. He was saying about it. I remember. Yeah, he did. So so yeah. So perhaps it's all over. And I have put the link on there for you. Yep, the link's on there. Steve's putting the links on for you. And uh, so and PJ says it's from the end of next month. From the end of next month. Okay, oh. what's next? Okay, next one. You might have seen this one in Daily Mail, I think. I think I found it. Um, the Real Blair Witch Project. Um, terrified campers fled the woods after hearing the chilling voice of a child at 1am and capturing ghost-like vision on their camera. Lola Swan and Kate Shannon went camping in Lee Woods near Bristol but they abandoned the trip after hearing strange noises in the woodland. When they got home, they saw a ghost-like figure in one of their photos. Miss Swan said, I knew, we were going to be, I knew we were being watched, and that the picture proves it. Two women who went camping in the woods got the fright of their lives after seeing what they believe was a ghost. So you can actually, if you go follow the link, you can actually see the photograph. I've seen it, but I'm not too sure about it, to be honest. Um, you know, it looks a bit like a, a, one of the ghost apps, mm, to be honest. Yeah, well, just, I don't know, maybe I'm, something uh, natural yeah. or a bit of foliage yeah. or... I mean, that's not, sure. that's not not to say that they've actually done anything. So no. Could it, as Emma said, it yeah. could be something natural there amongst the trees. Yeah. yeah. But then you catch it just the right angle, it, it looked a bit weird. Well, this is it, you know, not only that, depending on what the atmosphere was like during the day, and if things are cooling down, you're going to get sort of misty like, sort of thing, aren't you? I haven't yeah. seen the picture, so. Yeah. But it can sort of like protrude as if it's some sort of ethereal spirit. Sort it's of not, thing. yeah, it's not very defined. It's no. just like a, a blobby thing. Yeah, a yeah. blobby. So it it's Mr. Missed. Blobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they did, apparently, this, the, during the night, they heard sounds of what can only be described. As people walking around, twigs and branches cracking mm -hmm. and breaking, and footsteps on the forest ground, and also they hear the voice that sounded like a, a child speaking to them. But mm. it, you can, the brain can do strange things when oh, you're, yeah. in, you're camping in the woods, two women alone, lots of creaking noises, and yeah, it's just yeah, it's one of yeah. those yeah. one of those things. Yeah, I yeah. mean, when you when you're in the dark woods, your mind starts to play tricks on the, every 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 little. Oh yeah. No, is it somebody coming? To yeah. Half the time it's a cow of her, a herd of cows. <laughs> yeah. Cow of hers. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell we're tired. Cow of hers. It's going to be a short <laughs> night tonight. There's a little, there's a little story actually. You just said that. But, uh, again, we was at Maze Arch. You know, Maze Arch. I was talking about before, <clears throat> and PJ. Uh, was there, and um, there was some. We, I think we had somebody that said that they had there was aliens or something in the field, or demons or something like that. I'm sure you'll correct me on the on the web page there. And um, PJ was sort of saying, no, they're not, no, they're not, you know, no, they're not. No. And these people were convinced that there was either demons or, or uh, aliens or something because shiny eyes and everything. And it's like, oh, so we shone these torches. It was poor cows. 
you know, in, in the field there, just grazing merrily. So that's what you, that's what I mean when you're in the woods, you see things. If the light hits them in the right way and the light, uh, their eyes light up, it's like, whoa, what the heck? So, and when you're in a wood, and like what that story you've just been saying yeah, there, it's full of nocturnal animals. Yeah. It's full of nocturnal animals. And when you get furry creatures mixed with foliage, mixed with blocks out, the tail might be missing because there's a, a, a branch in its way there. So you might suddenly see a body with great big claw things hanging out in the middle of it. Well, it's, it's, you know, and a little squirrel comes popping out and goes, was it me? Was it me? You know, that type of thing. So. Yeah. And he's got. Uh, yeah, uh, I like one as well, please, bro. Uh, and he said he's going to tell us a hilarious story when he rings. Yes. Demon. After this. Okay, the last one. I quite like this one. It made me laugh. Um, the Pope approves the baptizing of Martians. Pope Francis announced that everyone has the right to baptism, even aliens from Mars. French news agency a AFP reports that during the Pope's daily mass on Monday. May 12th, he stated that Christians cannot close the door to all those who seek baptism, even if they are green men with long noses and big ears like children draw, he continued. If tomorrow, for example, an ex expedition of Martians arrives and some of them come to us here, Martians, right, green with long noses and big ears, just like children paint them, and one says, but I want to be baptised, what would happen? The Telegraph and other media outlets assume that the comment about baptising Martians was simply a display of the Pope's lively sense of humour while delivering a more serious message about how everybody has the right to be baptised. But Pope Francis isn't the only Catholic who has recently mentioned baptising extraterrestrials. In a 2010 interview with the Guardian, Guardian <laughs> the Vatican astronomer guy, oh, you always put, it's always a really long, unpronounceable uh, yeah. name. You don't have to go a Con, long way um, to extend Cons the Catholic faith, don't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm going to have a go at this. Guy Consol Maggi Maggio, I think stated that he would baptise an extraterrestrial being if one requested, because any entity, no matter how many tentacles it has, has a soul. Oh, oh, you that. know, if, if a Martian came down and they tried to baptise it, you know, the, the Martian, how does he know that the, the Martian would not see this as an attack, as an assault? It, it, well, it won't know. They're it, not saying to sort of just go and baptise them. They're saying if an alien came up to them and said, can you please baptise me? They would, they would do it because but that, to me right. that's just that's the way oh somebody new somebody new bring them in I'm going to I'm going to convert <laughs> them I'm going to get them before the C of E get them you, you know that type of thing you well know. maybe maybe well I come from Uranus and I haven't been baptised <laughs> um okay I'm the, not even going to go there no not. I hope you don't <laughs> give us a shout if you ever want to um the present day Vatican is open to science and the possibilities of life elsewhere in the universe in a 2009 interview with the Vatican newspaper, the Observatore Romano, Father Jose, Jose Gabriel Funes, the, di the director of the Vatican Observatory, stated as a multiplicity of creature as exists on Earth, so there could be other beings also intelligent created by God. This does, this does not contrast with our faith because we cannot put limits on the creative freedom of God. The article that contains this interview with Funes is titled The Extraterrestrial is My Brother. And a question for yeah. you anyway. If, an, if a Martian was to come to Earth, mm -hmm. do you think they'd be more religious or they'd be more scientific based? They probably wouldn't want converted because to be able to make the space travel to get here or whatever they're doing in all this high tech stuff, it sounds like they'd be more scientific based than well, the way anything I, else. Well, the way I see it, religion is a man made construct. It's, yeah. it's, it's how we comfort ourselves, it's how we will create societies, because a lot of society is based on religion. So if these are higher beings and they have higher um, have higher technologies, and may, I like to think that maybe they're a bit more open-minded. They'd and be able to tell us about religion. Than, spiritual yeah. rather than religious. I think they might be spiritual. Well, Mars is a lot of, is older. Yeah. Well, so they'd be able to tell us, if, if, yeah. if, I'm sure. Well, you know. if they find us, they might find they might have found God. They say well. it's not that way; it's well, this way. Here's the Meccano set. Well, in a way, you can understand what they're saying there because, it, according to their faith, God created everything. Yeah, well, exactly. So, so from that point of view, yeah, but uh, but you've got how, different how, cultures of different beliefs. How, how, yeah. how do we know the Martians are not coming to convert us? How do we know, indeed? I mean, if we went to Mars and we landed there, and they, you know, they took us into one of their little. Martian agogs or whatever, and started converting us to to, <laughs> to to green bloop or whatever you want to call it, red bloop. 
or some I don't know. You know, we might think, Ooh, no, you know, because you, you only have to go down the road. You know, Wales, that's a different religion. No offense, I'm only joking. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all different cultures. People have different beliefs um, around the world, so off world. And uh, apparently, Mars and Earth are roughly the same age. Yeah, well, well, the Earth is well. Apparently, people. They, this is what they, what they reckon is people. Um, they believe that people was descendant, you know, originate from Mars and, and things like that because of the cosmic dust in the, you know, and all that that, that came here. So Mars is a little bit older than the, than the Earth, and the Moon is older than the Earth. Or is it the other way around? The moon's older. I don't know. It depends. It's, it I think fans. the moon's older than the Earth. So everything... <laughs> and you know about the hollow... All the planets are all like piece of rock that have been blasted out from this big Yeah, band. yeah, of course, yeah. So the further the way you are, the young... Is it the younger the you younger you are? Or... I don't know. I don't know. Well, and the moon's supposed to be hollow as well. I don't know if you've ever heard that theory. Well, why not? We've got a hollow Earth. Yeah. They reckon that astronauts was on it, and I mean hollow, hollow. Like they thought, they tried to say at some point that it was like some like you know like Star Wars has the Death Star, mm. something yeah. like that, like a like an old space a spaceship apparently was there because when when the, uh, the, the you know the NASA astronauts was on there when the the falling rocks from the uh, the meteorites hit, it, it landed with a thud that would resemble something that would hollow mm. inside, you know, that type of thing. So, uh, and plus they found two, allegedly, World War Bomber on the dark side of the moon, and there's runways been set out with stones symmetrically, evenly laid out, apparently. So, so we're, we're talking about the, uh, the Nazi base on, on, on the moon. Oh, you've watched it as well. Iron, yeah. Iron Sky. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw it on YouTube. And it still sounds like rubbish. Mind you, wasn't there a film yeah. about that as well? I think I've got it, actually. Yeah. What the film? I've got some uh, where the, the Nazis at the end of World War Two they I'm move sure. off to the moon. Uh, Andy says, stop reading the Daily Sport. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I keep getting stuck on page three. Oh, is that the Daily Sport? <laughs> no, the, the, the Sport do it in all, all, all sorts of pages. Some the sun's on page three. The, <laughs> well, the sun is a planet. Anyway, Superman told me that from the Daily Planet, so he'd know. There's all sorts of things. That's it, then yep. You, then you got the pole reversal. Thank you, Emma. She, did she do well? Yeah. Good old Ems. <laughs> That's a good point as well. What's that? Uh, just, just talking about when we talk about all them then, the, I was just going to say about the, uh, the shift, you know, the pole reversal. Mm-hmm. And it happens, you know, every uh, 500,000 years, you know, t- uh, sorry, 250,000 years. 500,000 years, and the last time it happened was 750,000 years ago, so we're over 250,000 years overdue. I wonder, if, as that's building up closer and closer and closer, kinetic energy starts to build up within the Earth itself, you know, and in the atmosphere, as it's getting closer and closer and closer, and more people start to experience more paranormal-based type like phenomena. Yeah ghostly activity and things like that when it's not really paranormal phenomena it's the natural kinetic energy from the earth and the elements around the earth as it draws to a you know as, as, if you look at us in this day and age compared to the day and age years back you know yeah we are getting more sensitive yeah we, we think you know like like some people say it's a spiritual awakening but it, i suppose it depends on how you look at it. as human beings we, we we reach out for that spiritual awakening because we need to know there's something there when we've sort of left this hello you Hello, it's, it's a ghost down here. There's a ghost down here. Look at this. Yeah. And he said it happened last week, so, but nobody noticed, so we flipped back. Oh, right. Little ghost. <laughs> I just see that on the screen. You know, so, uh, but I mean, who knows? But that's what, you know, when yeah. you think that all the continents was all one at the beginning, it was all one continent, the amount of energy in the Earth when these continents broke apart as evolution was carry, con- you know, was going ahead, the amount of energy that must have been engulfed by the Earth and then let off, you know, and then obviously you got your volcanic uh, activities and things like that. As we, as it, every so often, the Earth heads into a change. Obviously, the like, yeah. you know, and the, the energy has a build-up process. And then whoever may, I mean, people may be years gone by, or animals, or even whoever, like the dinosaurs and things like that. Maybe they experience paranormal type phenomena. Who knows? Before they had the uh, the big build-up of the the uh, the Grand Canyon. Well, we've got Andy on the. Uh, Thank God. Well, they uh, they say that. Uh, Hopefully, we've got the, Andy Mercer the earth, online. The earth refreshes itself, uh, which, yeah. which is a possible explanation for the, the flood of Noah. 
Well, yeah, that's hello. right. Are you there, Andy? Oh, that's right. Oh, hello, yes. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Hello. hello. How hello. are you? I'm not too bad. I've just taken a bit of break from um, lesson planning, as I say earlier. Right, okay. It's my third placement in my teacher training. I'm at a Catholic school, believe it or not. Oh, right. Ah. Well, me there. <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. It's interesting, I have to say. Yeah, a quick tell you a story about um, being caught out and being surprised by stuff unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. Did a, a week-long investigation of several locations back in, oh, well, about 2003, I think it must have been, 2002 maybe? Yeah. A long time ago, anyway, a few of us from a group called COTC, who were down in the Sussex coast, used to be a member of years ago. And we'd got up to a church in the Midlands that had supposedly been, ghosts had been seen outside and supposed to be linked to some kind of black magic, satanic ritual type stuff in the ground of the church. Mm. Anyway, in the middle of the night, we get there, there's four of us, we kind of nose around the churchyard, and um, we get a, a call, walkie-talkie call, from the other guy back in the van to say that a couple of cars have fallen into the car park. So, okay, it's about sort of eight, nine o'clock at night, but it's the middle of winter, so it's pitch black. Yeah. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so... We sort of kind of edge our way around back to the car park, and another car pulls up. And they're quite nice cars. It was about sort of as a Jaguar and other sort of flag picking cars. And we think, hey, oh, this is a bit strange, you know. The church is in darkness, and these cars are pulling up. So we're trying to sort of sneak a bit further around, and about two more cars turned up. So as you talk about five or six cars there, and we noticed that the church door was open, but there's no lights on. And we thought, that's a bit strange. Mm. And we managed to creep round to the actual roadway, just sort of trying to edge up ourselves a bit closer to see what was actually going on without being seen obviously in the car park yeah all of a sudden we heard loud bells ringing it's a bloody church ring the bell ringers were practicing oh god <laughs> jumped out of our skin there's sudden loud bells ringing oh, it's god. so suspicious now they kind of kept pulling up and parking in the car park but well, the lights sort of turned off i think maybe just because there was houses nearby or something but it was <laughs> it was a um, quite unnerving moment until those bells started ringing until you realized it's just bell ringers but yeah so that was um interesting I bet, I bet. So what's this about Cold House Fault then, Andy? Um, I can't bloody remember. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so long ago. Uh, well, the, the night itself was relatively quiet, I have to say. I mean, uh, anyone who's been to Cold House Fault, you've got these long uh, underground tunnel with lots of little rooms to the sides of it where they stored ammunition for the guns and that sort of thing for yeah. the port during the war and there's often been activity in those tunnels it's always a place of strange noises and bangs and often odd spells and all sorts of things but um john blackman had the uh angrish man painting with him so we tried experiments with that down in the tunnels with us and it was quite strange it was you could feel like there was two opposing forces almost so the tunnels themselves or whatever it is that dwells in them didn't like the idea of this painting be there and the painting itself was giving off quite a strong negative vibe as well so it's like it, two energies conflicting with each other so that was quite amusing so it was just being in that kind of atmosphere yeah. but it, it kind of I would have thought that would have been quite good actually especially after uh, when you did the uh, the cage uh, the, the, the yeah. cage when he came across a, a song about uh, the camp wasn't it yeah well I've started getting a lot more of sort of feelings and thoughts about the the connection to World War Two, and uh, because the base has got World War Two links, of course, I mean, it's built in the um, Napoleonic time, but mm. it rebuilt in the First and then Second World War. So it was um, quite interesting having that sort of energy down there, with some, the possible connections into the <laughs> World War Two and that sort of time frame as well. So it was a, a different kind of link and crossover there. Mm. But overall, it was a pretty good night. It was a little bit quiet, but it was good. We had um, I managed to fill in the guys who work at the fort a bit more information about the um, very real occult activity that happened in the 1980s in one corner of the site. <laughs> knew a little bit about, but I knew quite a lot about because we investigated it years ago, so they were confirmed with them what I knew, what they knew kind of matched up, so it was an interesting night, I have to say, it was pretty good Somebody told me, I don't know whether it's the same now, but uh, when you book it, you're given the keys and when you finish, you throw them over the wall No, no, they have um, <laughs> I mean, that's what they did they just run free, Apparently they, that's uh, what this, this group did, you, you know, but I believe there's another group that's um, uh, running it now or something. Yes, I mean, it, it, every couple of years it seems to change hands for whatever reason. Mm. From what I understand, talking to the guys, uh, the actual kind of management committee, if you like, really don't like this ghost stuff. But they oh, recognise right. it makes them money, so they're not going to stop it. Yeah. But they don't like it, so they got anyone sort of just says, oh, I'll stay for the night, and they get a little crew, and they get their mates to stay with them. But the people that are there now are pretty good, I have to. Never any problems with any of them, but I was a bit disturbed when I know more about the site than they do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is it. So... 
but <laughs> is what places question. have you been to which have actually you can actually say scared you? If um, in all honesty, nowhere. Nowhere. Uh, no. Where's I mean, the best place you've been to then, Andy? I'm trying to show off, but I've never been scared by this stuff ever. <laughs> um, in terms of activity-wise, I mean, it's got to be places like Woodchester Mansion. I mean, I've not been there for a few years now, and I hope it's not as good as it used to be. Mm. But I was part. Of, funny enough, that same week-long investigation I was just talking about. Well, another location we went to was Woodchester Mansion, and we were the, only the second people ever to investigate it after the Ghost Club did about a year before. We were there with the Ghost Club. So that was quite spectacular to know that you're kind of the dawn of a great location. So, of course, it had not been done for years, well, ever really, before the Ghost Club went in. And now it's like a very, very popular place. So we're like yeah. to kind of help put that one on the map because we mm. had a brilliant night then. As well, all sorts of noises, crashes and bangs. I mean, one of the most amazing things I've ever heard happened again at um, Worcester Mansion. Now, a guy called Robert Shaw he used to run the Ghost Club. I don't know if he's still with us anymore. I've not heard from him for years. But anyway... He told me the story that when they were there the first time, they heard like a, a rumbling, crashing sound as if something was falling off the roof. Of course, when they rushed outside to make sure nothing was happening, there was no sign of anything falling down. But it, was, it really sounded like part of the roof was collapsing. And years later, I was there on a, a front night investigation night and heard the same noise. It was amazing. You'd think for all the world that the roof was falling down. It was only that it was strangely muffled. That was the odd thing about it, but it, it definitely sounded like heavy sort of stonework or tiles sliding off the roof, but yet nothing shifted. I mean, the building's a shell, but it's complete in that respect, and then nothing yeah. fell off. You'd know it's like it fallen off, so that was pretty damn depressing as well. Another occasion there, we were um, at a um, front line event again, and they had a thunderstorm with no rain, which mm. is probably an electric storm. Yeah. We were in the middle corridor on the middle floor, the first floor, and there were people with us who were like, believers and some skeptics, that sort of thing. But every time there was a flash of light, you could see clear as day figures at the end of the corridor, just outline, but they were really quite clear. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, right at the end of the event, the woman came over and just said, you've got to speak to my husband. He's um, a bit reticent to talk about it. But basically, he came along with her, total, total skeptic, didn't believe any of it. And he was, he said to me, I effing saw those. I effing saw those figures. They were definitely there. Mm. So, I, I believe now, you know, I've never believed this. SHID, but I really do now because yeah, I was yeah. amazed by what he'd, uh, he'd seen. So that's a pretty good place. Um, I've had a few good ones at the Galleries of Justice, particularly the caves underneath once they are opened up. Again, my sort of connection to the, shall we say, darker stuff is always pretty strong. So yeah. I pick up negative or sort of unpleasant energies. I had a few encounters down there. Mm-hmm. Dudley Castle, again, that's got a bit of a reputation for some Where? Sorry? Dudley Castle. Dudley Castle. Dudley, right. Yeah. Yeah, have you been a fantastic Chris? photograph somewhere which someone uh, gave to me uh, the morning after a front night event. So it was broad daylight. And it's over the main entrance way. There's what looks like a black figure standing amongst the, um, what they call it, the, the battlements. Yeah. Except there's absolutely no way up there. You can't get up there. Wow. The well. staircase, the stairway's gone. It was mm. definitely a person. It's not a bird. You can see the, the outline of the person. And it's quite clear. I've got it on my computer somewhere. But the main reason I was going to ring up tonight was to show you guys the video footage in the vaults I think I mentioned typing up last week. Yeah. That I think is probably one of the, I mean, blow me own chump a bit here a bit, one of the best recordings that I've ever seen. And unfortunately, I didn't make it, my wife did. <laughs> <laughs> she was on the investigation with us. And um, she videoed this. I did most of the video in that night, but she had the camera for about 15, 20 minutes and she captured this image, which I'll show you in a minute. It's a famous uploaded onto YouTube. But I'll tell you a bit of a background of the event. It was um, Cole How. Uh, in the brain now it was um the Edinburgh Vaults. This was back at the time when we were there for six pounds a night each, and there were six seven of us. Yeah, which so one of the vaults, Andy? There again, which one? The Edinburgh Vaults, the actual vaults. You got the Marine Midway in- Street, is it? Yeah, that's it. The main vaults, yeah. I mean, they charge about two grand a night now. We had it like six pound each, and a member of Meerkat Tours, who was used to run it at the time, came with us for the night, so you can imagine the, the difference. But, um if you've ever been in there, you've got a series of small chambers linked with little corridors that have been carved into the hill, into the, um, the base of the uh, bridge. And they used to be lived in for a while, and then they were turned into workshops, and they were emptied out completely because they're just really bad and uh, poorly sanitised and just not very nice places to be. And the story goes that they were kind of basically lost until the 1970s, where they were magically discovered they were underground, and they've been turned into a tourist attraction ever since. But as I say, you've got one main entrance, and a series of chambers that lead off from the one entrance, in like a, a sort of a semicircle, if you like. The um, particular point where Mandy is filming is down the main corridor with the entranceway behind her, along a corridor to a, a room that opens out into a larger chamber. Now, 
there's her immediate right as you're filming, there's another corridor, and all of us were down that corridor in a room off that corridor. So there was absolutely nobody in the room where the video footage was filmed. Now, it's a little bit dark, so it's not incredibly easy to see, and I'll just add on the link to it so everyone can have a look. You need to watch it a few times. It's only six seconds worth because I try to cut it down to as small as possible. And I'll just put the um, link on now so you can see it. Oh, didn't like that. Oh, it's not going to work, is it? It's got a silly. Hold on, it's, for some reason it's not worked. Oh, typical. You'll have to send us the footage and we can put it on yeah. the, um, well, you can put it on the uh, KTPF page, can't you? Well, I can do it now if I can get the thing to work properly. Oh, ah, 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 ah. Hold on. <laughs> Give me two seconds. So it's there, but it's on private at the moment. Uh, no, I've got to turn it off private for a sec. Try that version of the link, see if that one works, because that's the, the hidden version of the link. That should work. No, it still says it's private. Oh, nuts. Hold on. <laughs> it's private. I, think, I would think they are private, yeah. Don't put it as private, put it as unlisted, and then whoever's got the link can oh, use okay. it. How do I turn it off? Anyone know? No. No, no. you guys. Are you turning yeah. us, us off or what? No, no, no the it, private thing. Private you get with, if it's on YouTube, you, you have, have to go to, into edit. You have to log into YouTube and then uh, you, you have and then to edit it. You share oh. options, yeah. So. Well, for self for thirty seconds. Oh, here it is. You're unlisted. You got it right. Yeah. Okay. If you do it that way, then anyone with the link can oh, see okay. it. Let's give this another try. Okay. Try that link again. See if it works. It's working. That's better, it's working now. Right. So if you, you, if you put that onto the page, then people can see it. Yep. Okay. It's on, this, on your page there, it should be there now. It should be on the chat room page. Right, okay. I can, uh, yeah, that it's, uh, it's, like, it's a tunnel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's across there. Like, like a shadow went across the bottom. Right, now get really close. Fill the screen with it, because you need to look really close. The best view of it is if you can see in front of you, just to the, just off to the right slightly, that's the area you should really look at. I know there's a dark shadow that appears slightly to the left, but it's to the right. If you watch yes, towards the end of the clip, you should see and shoulders and a head move across. Yeah, also, once you get on the other side, you can actually see the outline of the whole body. Yeah, on the right that's hand the thing. side. Right at the back is that what you're looking at as you look. There's a very, very dark bit. Yeah. I'll pause it for a sec. I can see for myself. I'm going to describe it better to you. I'll pause where, it. Do you where do you pause it? Uh, you can't really get it all thing. I've just paused them two seconds to, sh to look at what you're seeing. I'll just pause at any point because the camera doesn't move. Man, you yeah. then after that turns. If you look at what you're looking at, you can see to the far right as you're looking at it, that's the brick wall that's right in front of it. That's the corridor we go. We are all down. And if you look at the middle of the frame at the back, it's like a grey area. Just to the, r the right of the grey area is a very black bit, because that's the bit of the corridor that goes right to the back. Can you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. That little area there, between the black and the grey, almost in the centre of the picture, that's the bit to really watch. Hmm. Because that's where you see the real outline of someone walk past. Yeah. What I find interesting with that is that you can see it move across the really black as well. Yeah. You get the black in the near foreground, first of all, jet really black there, and then the figure. The well. yeah, now there's absolutely there no yeah, other it, light it source. Across, yeah. There's absolutely no other light source in there other than the two infrared lights on Mandy's camera. So you have to have something go in front of her to create shadows. There's no other light source. The only entrance way is behind her, and that's locked and sealed. The Mercat guy has got the key for it. It's all on the same floor. I used to have a good floor plan of the vaults, and I, I can't find it anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, you but PJ said it, it looks like someone's opened the door. Yeah, there's no doors. There's no doors there. Was there at any time? Does anybody I know? have no idea. No idea. I've never seen anything inside it before. Which is very old. I mean, there were 1700s, those things were 
I mean, it, what it basically is, it's the, it's the bridge, the main Nutri Street bridge, as I say, but because it's a huge, they don't want to make it solid because it would weigh an absolute ton and would um, take so much material. So it's all honeycombed with all these little rooms in them. So, But they were never meant to be rooms, houses. They were just like the honeycombs and people kind of moved into them. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, people were taken down there as well and killed and all sorts of things. You know, oh, yeah, I mean, it's a, a deaths in there. got a certain reputation for definite. Mm. 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 I mean, it might be interesting to find I mean, some people may have actually had doors, put doors on, you know. Oh, it's quite uh, possible, uh, certainly. You know, to, uh, well, we've had this video footage actually looked at by a professional cameraman. He can't explain it, so there's just no way. You need something there to create the light source. Mm. You're obviously getting a shadow on the, when, as you're looking at it, you get a shadow on the ah. left-hand side as well on the wall. I'm before, gonna, before it goes across onto the uh, the, the other area, the grey area. Yeah, I've got a picture here, which is actually from pretty much the same position that Mandy filmed. Just noticed it. It's so on online. Somebody's got it online. I'll see if I can copy the link and I'll show you the image. I get it to work, but it gives you an ordinary lighting, and I can give you a better idea from this picture exactly where you should be looking. Ah, yeah, that's not bad. Hold on, let me just find the link. Just twiddly thumbs for a moment, guys. <laughs> Twiddling thumbs, twiddling thumbs. Well, yeah, right, try that image, try that image. Right, okay, we're clicking on the image. See that, that's obviously, that's the, roughly the same place, lit up bright. Now, where the dark area is, yeah. the corridor, that's the, that's the entrance into the larger dark chamber, the mm. much bigger room at the back. The figure to look out for is the one that appears in that area of the shadow on the wall at the back. When you watch the, my video footage, that's the area to look at where that dark patch is. Because that's where, on a high quality, high res picture, you can see. It's basically the head and shoulders of a person moving past in a room that has only one entrance, which is the one that man is filming from. No other way in there. Mm. Intriguing. If a person was to be walking through there in the day, they'd be probably not, you know, carrying candlelight. And things mm. like that, so it would cast a shadow, wouldn't it? Of, you know, mm. it would cast shadows. So if it was, a, let's say, if it was a spectral energy of some form from the day, um, it might be said to assume that they're actually just going about the business carrying candlelight, and it's reflecting the shadows from the wall. Because when you look at it on the on the left side of the screen, you've got a shadow, a dark shadow on the left side of it before you see it in the grey area. So yes. there's, there's a shadow there as well. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. It seems to move across, doesn't it? Well, exactly. And if it, if it was localized. In that little area there, near the grey area there, then you know, it say it's coming in from that direction. If it was carrying a candle in its day, then its, its shadow may be cast out to be able to give that dark aspect on the wall. Mm. If, if that's more in the foreground. Absolutely. I mean, the interesting yeah, exactly. thing is... But then that could interact with the infrared on the camera, allowing that to be thrown back so you get to see it. Yeah. I think it, the camera yeah. obviously is moving slightly as Mandy's moving, but the movement of that dark area is different to the Mandy's camera movement. It, it moves much more rapidly than she's it moving. Is yeah, it is different. So it's, it's different. I must have, I never even spot that one at first. It was, a, again, the, the cameraman said that we look at it say, have you seen that bit as well? I think you got like a split second or half a second between the, uh, the you know. Because if whatever it is has just moved across, it's literally moving across the walls, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's only the fact that, I mean, I do check most of my video footage, but I mean, I had hours and hours of it. It's only the fact that we were waiting for our flight back from Edinburgh that was slightly delayed. I thought, well, I've got some video footage where I've got battery power, and I saw that in the airport. Mm. What the bleeding hell is that? So, what happened? That was on my old IOPR website for quite a while. Have you tried watching it, slow, slowing it down? Have you tried, to, you know, like frame, if you're putting it through your computer and do it yeah, in yeah. frame by frame motion? Yep, we've done all sorts of things you can uh -huh. fiddle about with it, and you do, you just, the dark patch kind of appears as if it's come out that close by door, it gets very dark for a moment, and then, as it disappears, the figure, or well, the shape, appears mm. across the other side, and it is, as you look very closely, it's, a, it's the head and shoulders of a person. Yeah. I mean, the, the foreground one is just a grey, it's a black, black mass, mm. not that kind of mass, just a black thing, but the other one is much more defined as a, per as a shape of a person, yeah. but like I said, I can guarantee there was nobody in that area. Mandy said herself, she didn't know she'd filmed it, but she felt a bit spooked, that's why she came and joined us, and the full, she's probably there for another good five, six minutes, there's nothing else in the footage, I've yeah. checked, she it's then turns down the corridor to her right and joins the rest of us. It is very, it is very interesting, what, what, I would, what I would do personally, I mean, I'd slow it down, I mean, it's very interesting footage, it's 
it's very hard to put uh, anything other on there in a rational explanational aspect. Um, what I would do, I, I'd view it frame by frame if I could, and I'd take photographs of each frame. Do you know what I mean? You'd take a snapshot of it as it's going along, and I'd try and zoom in and clear up the picture, zoom in and try and get a, a sort of step by step. Let's say each picture might show the, the different stages or the transformation. Uh, of, a man, of the manifestation, let's say, as it's going from one area. Because we've got looking at the fact that if it's a dark shadow on the left-hand side of the screen and then suddenly comes over to the other side of the screen, in between it's disappeared and that's where the, 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 the mass of infrared lights accumulated. Well, it is there, but it's, it's a lot fainter. It's very yeah, faint the, in the middle. The, the infrared light yeah, will be blocking that out. It's you know. the outer spectrum. Of yeah. The doorway which you first see, it was literally no more than five feet from Mandy. Mm. The back wall, because that chamber is actually quite big, it's deceptively large. It's a good the chamber itself is probably a good twenty foot across, and then it's about ten foot corridor down. So it's gone from being a matter of maybe five feet away from it to about thirty feet away. It'd have been it'd have been interesting to see what you might have caught if you'd have used the ultraviolet in, yeah. in the same area. We're talking about two thousand and two back in those days. Yeah, we? I mean, I don't think, they are now. We didn't have the ideas, well, and I think we only just discovered infrared more or less in them days. Yeah. But, uh, Lucky enough to get back in there a couple of years later, again with a, with a different crew. It was a front night event, and we had time to try and sort of basically recreate what we'd seen. Mm. And you just couldn't. You know, there was no way of, if there's any other way of making a shadow and not seeing the person or being out of the frame, it's impossible. You know, there was just no way you could do it. There has to be something that was in the camera and that rear wall to create a shadow, and there's nothing. The only way, other way of doing anything is to have somebody else, obviously, you know, you're, you're vouching for the fact. You know that there's nobody else in another area of that room coming through with a candle or a torch light or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, the the I just I knew where everybody was. Yeah. Yeah. From a it from a skeptic's point of view, from a skeptic's point of view, could, is it possible that somebody was moving behind your wife? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> is, no, there was no one else there. But <laughs> if, if that, it, it, you know what I mean? Because if, if yeah. the light was behind her, yeah. It will show, and it will, and it will disappear in the middle where his wife's What that would have, what I think that would have achieved on that level is, if someone had been behind her, you'd have got the shadow, let's say, on that right, on that left hand side of the wall, because you've got a solid object at the end, so the shadow would cast itself on there. But um, as it goes across the grain, then you've got the hole. The, the black area, which obviously looks like an hole to an entrance, so then you, you, you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't see it, you wouldn't see it on there then, because it, it's, well, there was virtually it's nobody else. Place. There was no, sorry, there was virtually, no, virtually no space behind, apart from the staircase to the yeah. main exit. Well, there'd, there'd be no shadow cast in the in the void. There would be on the wall, on the inside of the cabin where the camera is facing the camera, but it wouldn't produce uh, like you know, like, and it's not so much as a dark shadow. It's more of a, it's, it's a lighter colour, so you can see it mm. uh, in the dark area, so you can see it. So if that had been a shadow of someone at the back, it wouldn't have produced or reflected itself so, to to the degree it is there. Yeah. In that dark, in that in that alcove, well, I'll call it an alcove. It's a hole because obviously there's more space area in that area, and because it's darker, yeah. it's a darker area. It's not as illuminated by the infrared light, so therefore yeah, any light in there would have been gobbled up. Room. Yeah, the, the light would have been taken. It would have been gobbled up by the darkness because it wouldn't have been as powerful to protrude from here to there. So Absolutely. you know, so on all the light in the, in the cavern is being reflected back. Uh, on the wall, on the infrared, so it would have been more centrally gathered in the area where your camera is, and not where the uh, the void is. So I, I would say it's virtually impossible. Is, it is um, the way it's diverse. It's this, it's dispersed, should I say, in close up, mm. but yet it's sharper in distance, which is the reverse of it should work if it's an ordinary shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michaela saying this, this is what happened at the, Le at the Leopards Inn at uh, in room fifty two, yeah. a shadow moving within shadow. Oh, interesting. Was it normal night shot or super night shot? It was... Um, full infrared. Yeah, it was just full infrared. It's the old Sony cameras that were just in infrared, so zero lux. Right, right. Because sometimes you have, you can have your normal night shot. Saying that, I don't think it couldn't have been uh, super night shot, because if you use super night shot, the slightest movement of a camera blurs, everything blurs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously she's moved a little bit with the camera. You just see her moving a little bit and nothing blurs. So I was just looking at one of the questions on there. Uh, yeah, so no, obviously it's, you can tell it's, it's standard, standard um, infrared and not, uh, you can tell it's not, because it would have been more illuminated if it had been, um, yeah, exactly. you know, That's and, that and brief it would have been period of time when everybody was copying Sony's um, patented design of the Zero Lux camera. I don't know if you know the story, but they, hello? 
Oh, sorry, I thought I'd just been. Um, they were, suddenly invented it, and then everyone else copied it, and then suddenly charged them a bloody fortune, or sued for lots of companies with lots of money, because they'd copied their design. And that's when that super infrared, that the super light thing you talk about was invented by other people. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've stopped using all that, that infrared. The infrared that that was taken with, they've stopped using that now, haven't they? They've, they've... Oh, Sony, Sony still do, because it's their technology. Yeah, but they, they've changed the infrared. They call it they call it Night Shot Plus now. That's but, it, yeah. But they changed it because that style of infrared that we, you were using in them days, back in them days, you could see through people's clothing with it. So they've stopped it. It was well, green, like a green, they call it. And now it's a, it's like a more black and whitey type of yeah, infrared. I mean, I've never seen through anyone's clothes in all the videos I've done. We have. <laughs> we have. We've seen people's underwear through that, you know. Well, yeah, like. yeah. I know you're talking about if you've got something like a white bra and they have a dark <laughs> topping and the white bra can shine through quite brightly. And that was just mine. <laughs> <laughs> my underwear but, yeah no yeah that's true so they, they've changed it <clears throat> and they, they, it's been like for a number of years you don't I, I find personally you don't get the same the beneficial uh, qualities with it these I mean, some yeah. people swear by it and so it's fantastic but I think the old infrared like what you've been using on that, on that one there the one that sort of illuminates on the more greeny sort of aspects I think that yeah. was far 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 superior well, actually, yeah, I mean, I've got the two use. infrared Sony lights, and the, the last, funny enough, had the um, Color Sports 7 from the Sony Boy, and you get those, you just can't buy them anymore. No, no. That's I'm it. looking after these. That's it. I mean, people can that's buy it. a lot of different gadgets, and they add them to their cameras to produce the infrared. I don't think they get the same results as what they do with the, uh, you know, the original infrared that was exactly. out there in the day. You've got to have the frequency, the light frequency range to get infrared working properly. You can't just pretend it's like put green light on it and think that's going to work for you. Yeah, that's it. I mean, if it's zero looks, I mean, someone tells me it's zero looks, you know, obviously mm. when, when, the, when the light's off. But what was the original infrared? Because it must have been beyond zero looks because it produced the more intelligent uh, on look of things when you use that compared to today because you can use that's one that's today and it's still dark you can have your infrared on night shot plus and it's still dark but, you yeah know, on some of them but when you use the one that you've got on there you could see for miles let's say you know not for miles but you know oh, a no, wider area a good range of them because the, i've got two sets of lights in the camera and i get them obviously lined up to each other so oh. they can either have a wider spread and lot it's a larger area or can narrow yeah. them in so they actually a brightly a small area maybe it was minus oh. zero plus Maybe. Maybe it was a bit minus zero plus, beyond zero no, plus, a little bit. Zero, zero light is no light whatsoever, so I don't know if you can go into minus because it is zero, zero light completely. But, of but course, it's infrared, it's the it's heat signature it's picking up, so the uh, dark shadows means it's colder. Depends on their, uh, how the manufacturers are defining uh, the zero looks. When they, I mean, obviously they're, they're putting something on to say it's, it's zero looks. And maybe that one was, but maybe these ones that we have today, even though they say zero looks, aren't quite zero looks, um, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think they are proper zero looks, and it's, they still require a little tiny amount of light. That's right, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's light, the definition it's of it, isn't it? Spectrum. Mm. Whereas when you're at zero looks... what happened afterwards with the video, photos, the, the effect it had. We um, that put it onto our website, and the video footage itself has been hosted by a guy who was in the, in the group who had his own server as part of his work. And basically, one Sunday afternoon, the server completely crashed. It was being viewed so many times. And our forum went from having the odds of visit every now and again to having 20, 40, 90, 120. I don't know, what the bloody hell is going on? And then uh, one of the other guys ran me up and said, you know, we're in the Sunday Times. I said, what? Mm. <laughs> it was around Halloween and Meerkat were trying to promote the Edinburgh Vaults as being haunted. And they'd written an article about our video footage and the night we'd spent there. Someone had obviously, from the, the Sunday Times, had read it and mentioned our website and the video footage in their article on Halloween, but they didn't tell us. So the poor bloke's uh, server crashed, and people were trying to download the video footage. That was, of course, a bit before it for him. The next morning, his um, boss was asked what the hell was going on. He couldn't get through to the server late at night. So that was um, a bit of a surprise. Question so, for you guys. Uh, do you think a place can suddenly become less haunted the more it's done? If it's overdone. Who's, is that, who's that to, everybody? Yeah. My to, personal view, yeah. To both of you. My view is, yeah, I think some, it can be overdone too many times. That's my view. What do you think, Andy? Uh, I don't know, I was going to see that. I'll be honest with you, I've got conflicting opinion. I've always found with Woodchester Mansion, for example, it, is, it depends on who's there, not so much how many people are there. If you get loads of uninterested people week after week who just go along for the sheer hell of it, then I think a place usually gets sort of a flat and nothing happens. But if you go 
with groups that are really enthusiastic. Like the, I was going to Woodchester almost every week a few years ago with Fright Nights because we were having such wonderful nights. I was working with Marty who ran the company. We used to have brilliant nights together. And every time we were there, stuff, really good stuff would happen because the people who were with us were really enthusiastic and really into what was going on. So I don't know. It depends on the people, I think, more than the place. If the, you know, the place can be quickly be drained out of any activity if people just aren't engaging with it because we undoubtedly play a part in what goes on and we don't we don't fake it like that but would that be actually would that actually be the paranormal entities that are there i mean if you go to some place let's say you go to some place with somebody and in the early days and there's a lot of activity going on and then obviously there's people and people and people and people and people been there since and then you go back again with a couple of people and you experience nothing um, you know, would, could that be where other people, when they've been there, more enthusiastic? Like you've said, it's a projection of their own enthusiasm, their own energy that they're actually, be, you know, that they're incorporating each other's energy. But when you're there on your own and nothing's flat, uh, everything's flat, you know, because nothing going on because there's not as much energy to be projected. I would have thought, you know, if anything on a paranormal basis was there, then is the time that somebody's, much, you know, would be more likely to encounter, you know, encounter something where they, you know. Uh, when it's just like your own energies, but with other people's energies, this is where the the scientific exploration has to you know has to come into things. Is it other people's energies around us that we're unaware of that we're incorporating? Other people's fears, their their emotions, other people's you know the magnitude of it. And when it's all combined together, because the more people you have, and all this is more you know combined, the magnitude of it could be creating things that we're to we're, we're even as paranormal when we could actually go back in and the whole the whole place is flat because the energy is. It's it, it virtually zilch. It's not there. You know, and well, that's... Yeah, so the things I would say is quite true of a lot of places, but whatever's there is there, but it uses our energy to actually manifest, if you like. It needs... that We're like the battery power. Oh. And if we're not sort of positively charged battery power, then nothing happens. We're kind of negative and flat. Oh. Then almost as if we then drain the place or the place responds to us. I mean, it's all very strange. Hey, no, hey, it's very, very strange. I mean, we've been to places, and we know other groups have been to places over the years... Uh, since 2003 and onwards and groups used to go there you know to different places all the time and you could guarantee that every group would come back and they'd be reeling about you know and everything would be it in the internet well we, we found this we found that nonetheless they all had good you know they all had experiences but as time went by you know you, you, you'd start to incorporate or see groups that are going to this like you know this, the place and the, the activity that they're in count you know seem to be incorporated seems to become more decreased become less and less and less and less and then people the visitations would start you know would be coming less and less and less and less because you think oh every time we go there it's flat now and then this is where people would start say oh it's been done to death you know um but then when yeah. the more people that go if if there's an energy there you know if we maybe sometimes we could be incorporating this energy and taking a bit of the energy from it you know, um, and leaving yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. Of. That's quite a possibility that it works both ways. Mm. Ian Knight has made the same point. I think if the people go there, you create cohesive energy together. Because used to pick up people do lots of energy work at the start of front investigations there, and I think that made a huge difference. And again, I, I always repeat, I don't think it was anything we did that created this stuff. It was there. It's just it needed some energy conduit, for yeah. a better phrase, mm. which was us to really actually become active. I mean, you get some yeah. places, don't you? <clears throat> Excuse me. You get some places where people are act, you know, they're in, inactively searching for goals. They're not doing anything. They're just living, doing everyday things. In fact, most of the paranormal reports seem to be from people who are. Uh, uh, they're not interested in that type of thing. They're just oh, living yeah. their everyday lives and they're just do, they're going to work or whatever. And then suddenly they turned around and there was an old woman standing there. Or, you know, and the, the majority of reports seem to be from people, you know, on, when they're on their own. So they've got no, a, no witnesses yeah. and no technical data to, to collect. Um, yeah. and there's not a massive amount of people. But then you get 100 people. Say that there was just somebody in the office. I went into the office there and I just went to get something. When I turned around, I noticed this old woman was sitting down. I thought, oh, I thought everybody had gone. When I turn around again, she's gone. But you, later that same day, you've got a hundred people working in that office, and nobody's incorporated anything. So it's a bit, it's weird, isn't it? How how it goes, you know? Oh yeah, it's strange. I often um, say that I think a lot of people see ghosts and so don't realise what they've just seen because to yeah, them it's yeah. like, oh, where was that person gone? I just saw in the middle of the afternoon. They think well, one was past them. I mean, my my very first ever experience of. Uh, ghost if you like mm. in the middle of a sunny sunday afternoon you know not some haunted mansion in the middle of the night it was a sunny afternoon it was cold asphalt 
was just talking about earlier. I was there, I was about 10 years old, and I was just in the grounds of the fort, just mucking about with some kids playing football, and I had my glance up. Not even fully looking, just kind of glanced across, and I saw two men in uniform walking past. In what I remember, is like webbing around the bottom of their legs, which I now know is World War One style uniform. It's like, I just sort of saw them, and it almost didn't register. It was like, who are they? Where are they? And then they were gone. You know, and also, it's that nobody else had seen them. Mm. So that was my very first experience, but it was a, it was a sunny afternoon on a Sunday, you know, it wasn't sort of middle of the night or thunderstorm or anything like that. So it just goes to show, like doesn't it? Like, it? just goes to show that people see them at any time. It's all the myth when they're, just, they're out and about at night times, you know. And it's, yeah, it's yeah. just goes to show at any time. A lot of the reports, like, like yours, like you've just said there, a lot of reports, especially in the hotels and things like that, are usually in the day rather than the night time because it's usually yeah, staff. Yeah that are always reporting seeing these things. You do get them at the night time. Obviously, people that stay in these rooms and things like that, but it's usually staff at work, and the majority of staff might work days and things like that. So a lot of reports are, are usually in the days, aren't they? So, yeah, that's that's an interesting sight in that. I mean, people have uh, made the, the objection of why do you do the ghost hunts in the dark in the middle of the night. The simple fact is your senses are far more acute in the night, in the mm. dark. It goes back to the ancient times when we were threatened by um, other animals that might try and kill us. So... You know, we naturally are more um, observant in the dark than yeah. in the night. No, but it, also, it, helps, it helps drown away uh, external sounds, doesn't it? Not, you know, external oh, yeah. sounds. Your There's equipment. Quiet, night anyway, so. Oh, definitely. Your equipment functions better. And obviously, as well, time. The time concept is very different. If you're running around at 2 o'clock in the morning, because people say, oh, you're stupid, you're running around at 2 o'clock in the morning for something you can't see. What might be 2 o'clock for us then? Obviously, years and years and years and years and years gone back wouldn't have been 2 o'clock. It would have been at a different time, wouldn't it? Mm. As time's progressed. So it's just that, you know, it would have been their time. But so they could say, well, why, who would be running around yeah. at 2 o'clock in the morning? Why would yeah. you have a ghost of a child running around? Yeah, it would also depend on... On whether it was before British summertime or not. Well, exactly. You know, the so that, calendar. that would throw it out by now, or at least. Mm, exactly. So it's, it's all different. There's, there's so many different aspects. You can all throw. It's a massive ratio. You just throw into the mix. It's like a it's like a pudding ball, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you got to throw everything mm-hmm. in, and we're, we're we're just only starting to stir this with a spoon. What we're going to make from it? If does it, is it going to rise? You know, are we using self-raising flour? You know, that type of thing. It's what we're going to get from this. You know, but. Uh, how we look at it, it's the mix, I think. But hey, yeah. does anybody know when we first started doing British Summertime? Emma does. Emma, you know everything. <laughs> no, you do. Was it at the start of summer? <laughs> <laughs> Was it just after the winter? I'm gonna. I am. I'm gonna make him into that box. <laughs> <laughs> Answers on a postcard, please. When we start in the British Summertime. Do you know? No. It probably was. What do you think, Andy? Do you know when? I actually missed the original question. When did British summer summertime start? Oh, World War One. Was it? Yeah, it was during the First World War. They did that to improve um, farming, to try and obviously build up the crops, so it was easier to farm in the daylight to increase the um, production. That was, so, yeah, that, that was the reason behind it. Yeah. Do you know where the saying yeah. comes from? Daylight robbery. Mr. Stephen Taggart. Yeah, absolutely, that's where it comes from. Certainly, I, did, actually, so, um, and I, I, I can't remember. Daylight robbery comes from when the you know the windows. You had a window tax. Yes, that's yes, right. And people, is. when they got the sunlight coming in, they'd put a tax on it for allow you to because obviously people lived in houses and things that had no windows and they couldn't afford this and the other. So they allowed put windows in. You got fresh air and they put window you know window tax and that was daylight robbery. So you was charged. Yeah, absolutely. Silly money, you know. Do you know also Here when we, we changed the calendar in the 1400s, you effectively lost about 30 days, mm-hmm. and they were right because people fit, thought that they actually had 30 days of their life stolen from them for the shift in the calendar. Yeah, which is yeah. quite amazing. It's we all weird, isn't that. it? It's all it's all fascinating stuff, really. Is how we. I mean, that's how I like I like to look at things on that level. I and mean, when we, you know, if we're doing investigations or well, if I'm addressing anybody in the club, I like to look at people. I, I, I like to start off with people ourselves, yeah. our energies, and well, how we are. British summertime was first proposed 107 years ago. I remember it well. Someone's looking at Wikipedia, I think. 1907. <laughs> now, now that was uh, www.rmg.org. Tell me that. Who's dot org? RMG. RMG? Yeah. Mm. Well, RMG. <laughs> Whatever RMG is. So what about British winter time? 
Yeah. Don't be big so, and daft. It's always been British winter time. <laughs> Well, listen, chaps, I'm going to ring off now to get back to do my um, lesson planning for tomorrow. Yeah, so. okay. Well, thanks okay. for giving us a call anyway. Yeah, take care, Andy. Take care, Andy. Nice speaking to you, buddy. Bye. Bye-bye. Yep. Well, that was Andy. Good conversation you had there, Chris. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's all right. It was I don't very mind. interesting. I am very tired tonight, so, you know, so, as I say... Got some matchsticks for your eyelids. Oh, I think we're going to need it. Oh, right, so. I'm going to... Um, let everyone know the uh, events that are coming up, and then we'll talk about your next event, shall we? We'll see you in a bit. Fed up of wading through the activities and events that other advertisers include? Find just what you're looking for at ParanormalEventsForYou.com, your one-stop paranormal directory. And first up, on the 25th of May at the Nidri Street Vaults in Edinburgh, um, Compass Paranormal are investigating there and you can find out more from them at compassparanormal.co.uk. On the 30th of May uh, at Cleveland Ironstone Mining Museum, uh, which is reported to have paranormal activity under the, in the dark underground tunnels and uh, they've been created since 1847 where miners struggled in the most unbelievable strenuous working conditions and many lives just uh, both old and young were lost numerous accounts which are thought to be caused by paranormal phenomena has been reported uh, campus paranormal are there as well and they're also at Fort Paul on the 31st of May um, a place full of underground rooms, tunnel bolts, hospital and the Blackburn Beverly aircraft. So if you want to know more about what they're doing, go to compassparanormal.co.uk. On the 6th of June, uh, they're at Kelvinden Hatch in Essex. There's a sponsored sleepover at the secret nuclear bunker. It's for DDRDF, um, DDRD Foundation. Um, which presents a sponsored paranormal sleepover at the uh, bunker, starting at 9.30 till 5 a.m. But it says, don't worry if it all gets too much, you can have a sleep in the original bunkers if you dare. So you can bring your sleeping bag, and on the night uh, they will be joined by Essex and Kent Paranormal Research Society team. So uh, you can find out more on their website um, for let me just get it for you because it doesn't seem to be there two seconds um, I'll get that for you just about now okay let me just uh, find it for you I don't know why it's not there so uh, where are we the sleepover right where have we got it it's at uh, uh, if you go to the DDR foundation um, which stands for Durkham's Disease and Rare Disease Foundation, which is ddrdfoundation.org. And you can find out more about what they're doing there. Um, what else have we got? On the 7th of June, um, Compass Paranormal again are off to Whittington Castle in Whittington, Ostery, wherever that may be. Uh, somewhere down south, I assume. Uh, explores the charming and remaining... Uh, romantic ruins of this very haunted castle. Castle was steeped in historic tales of bitter water, warcraft, treachery, and um, treachery, death, myths, legends, and of course many ghosts and strange happenings. And uh, you can find out more, as I say, from CompassParanormal.co.uk. Uh, the Grand Pavilion South Parade in Matlock on the June the 8th. Um, I think it's June the 7th as well. There is a Mind, Body and Spirit um, uh, weekend there. And uh, you'll fo also find Suzanne Lilly doing her intuitive tarot. Uh, many stalls that will be there um, with... Uh, with that event, and on the 14th and 15th of June, Derby MBS at the Pride Park Stadium. You can find out more from there from White Light Events. 
Uh, don't forget, there's two mediums running around on tour, and well, three now because uh, Colin Fry is doing it as well. So you can find out from them, uh, from that one as well. But uh, you've got the 2014 Enlightenment tour with Derek Akora. You can find out where he's uh, appearing near you at derekakora.com. Plus, uh, see Tony live, Tony Stockwell. And uh, you can find that from TonyStockwell.com and just click events. And incidentally, regarding Terry, uh, Terry, <laughs> regarding Derek Akora, um, a little bit further afield this one, there's a psychic weekend break coming up on the 3rd and the 5th of October with Derek Akora, TJ Higgs and Mandy Masters, including Jane Wallace and the Psychic Sisters and Alex Bailey. There's five mediumship demonstrations. And uh, that's going to be at the Staverton Park Hotel in Daventry. So you can find out more about that at psychicweekend.co.uk. So check out the One Stop Paranormal Directory for more investigations and events available now. ParanormalEventsForYou.com also offers banner advertising for only £10 per year. See our website for more details. ParanormalEventsForYou.com, your one-stop paranormal directory. Yeah, well, that's about it from the events, uh, just leading you into June. Um, okay, and uh, we've got Chris back from his little break. I wonder where you've been. <laughs> right, okay, so... You've been playing football with the lads over the back. Has he? I was checking poltergeist phenomena outside. I, was, I could hear voices. Oh, right. <laughs> well, anyway, um, now we're talking about your next event. Now, we've been there as well, and we're coming with you, aren't we? Leopard's Inn, yeah. Leopard Inn in Burslem. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, if I remember rightly, there's supposed to be a witch there called Molly. There'll be a few witches going when we take it, you know, the, some of the team. <laughs> There'll be a few witches. But we've been before, but That's I've never. That's not a nice thing to say been. about Michaela. We've been there. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know who I was directing it at? But yeah, yeah. Sorry, Michaela. <laughs> She'll say a few things about me, I'm sure, when she sees me. But, uh, well, I mean, she'll, I, she'll probably do the same to me, no? <laughs> She will, she will. Uh, we've been before, but uh, with good results. Well, I've never been, so it's, it's new for me personally, but the, the club's been. Mm. Yeah, we, we went there a while ago, didn't we? First time we went, we went with, with uh, Derby Power Normal, and we were throwing wires out the windows, and cause, cause all the hub was in the trailer outside. Yeah. Yeah. It's calling me lippy. It's calling me lippy? Yeah, it's calling me lippy. We'll have to see on the night when she's scared, won't we? On the night, but, so. yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I've seen, uh, you know, all the the, the corridors, the spooky corridors. I, what there was, you know, it reminded me of a place that I've been to before, um, you know, in Wales. But so I'm looking forward to it. You know, um, there's a place in Wales that you'd love you'd love to go to. But uh, so I'm quite looking forward to going to this yeah. one actually. What's that? It's going to be spooky. What spooky. one? Um, it was called the Imperial. Oh yeah, yeah. Imperial I Hotel. Yeah, I wanted you to go to that. And uh, we well, we used to host it for a while. Um, well, the, the former group um, in the old days. Um, that was quite you know as, as a lift like an old Victorian lift yeah. with all the, the the metal caging and everything. And when you go upstairs, it's just another world. You know, old Victorian. You have got the gas lamps in the wall, the news, the, the paper, and it's corridor after corridor after corridor after corridor after corridor. You could get lost in there, you know. And when I've seen pictures from uh, from the previous visit to uh, Leopards Inn, it reminds me on a similar level. Certain parts of it. I mean, but then pictures can make it look bigger than what it actually is. Yeah. So it might be quite pleasantly surprised. Yes, it is, it is a nice place. But at least we don't uh, we won't be there starting at half past ten. Because obviously the disused area, so we can get straight to it yeah. you know, when we yeah. when we get there. So we'll plan it out. And uh, I'll see yeah, there's a, you're talking about a place in Wales. There's a there's a pub called the uh, I think it's called the Three Dolphins. Is it Three Dolphins? It's so. not far from the jail, is it? Yeah. Ruth in jail. Ruth in jail. Yeah, jail, not far yeah. from Ruth. Not far from Ruth in jail. We've Ruth. been there, but I haven't been there myself. Yeah, you did, didn't you? But uh, they ha they have a spirit that mm. co that comes in all year round and changes his clothes. <laughs> so he come in in the summer dressed like you are now. In the summer Where does he get his clothes from? Uh, I don't know. But when he comes in, in in the winter, he's got a big coat on. Is he the same spirit? All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's different. Yeah, he, yeah. He actually changes his clothes to the weather. Well, that's different. It's really strange. Could it be that you see in the same spirit at different timelines, different times? Let's say they they went in that 
area when they was alive in the summer and they was wearing the shorts and whatever and then they was in there again and the atmospheric conditions then and then took imprints of the same person in different mm. clothes like if you see when people say Anne Boleyn haunts this place and haunts Will you stop being a smart ass? I was enjoying the fact that spirit changes his clothes. Well, I like it because I've never heard of it before, so <laughs> I really I like it though. But I'm, I'm I'm not speaking anymore. That's it. I'm spitting my dummy out. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do it as as a. I've never been called a smart ass yeah. before. You can do it as a as a, as a team. All right, Cause, cause cause three not, dolphins. Yeah, it's not I'm very sure big. It's a three dolphins. Yeah, it's, it's not very big. You, you've got the, the large pub area, you can do the kitchens and everything else after they close and stuff like that. That sounds alright, that. And he, and, he, and he doesn't mind, as, as long as you tell everybody. Right. Because obviously it gives... Three pigeons. Is it three pigeons, is it? Yeah. That's a long way from dolphins, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Really. So I would have ended, 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 ended up in the wrong pub here, wouldn't I? Three pigeons. <laughs> I'd have ended yeah. up in the wrong pub. It's yeah. three pigeons. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not. It's been far. a while since we went there. Yeah, it's uh, it's been three so pigeons. Uh, yeah. Better take an umbrella then, haven't we? we? Six years. Yeah, we did. We had a meal in there. You have to take an umbrella with you. It was uh, nice dealing food. with pigeons. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they do do nice. It food. was built in 1777. Uh, however, a drover's owl house and steed has been on the site since the 20th, uh, 12th century. Legend has it that Owen. Glindle, um stopped over at the Pigeons whilst on his way to the Parliament in, oh God, now I've got the tongue twisters, Meckinleith or something. During the 18th and 19th century, the heyday of droving, the Pigeons estate ran to 58 acres. Drovers taking their livestock to the market at Wrexham would settle their animals and then take refreshment and rest. The sellers at the Pigeons have made are made from the local country county rock so you know yeah, and, it's, uh, and, 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 he, and he, he gives you and it says that, well. that sounds intriguing uh, at the mo at, as was as with most old buildings especially pubs the three pigeons can boast its fair share of ghosts two for certain and possibly three many locals have ex experienced weird goings on sightings of an old man sitting in an armchair by the fire and the mysterious doings of a young teenager are regularly observed. When next visiting, strike up a conversation with one of the, our regular locals. I'm sure they will be delighted to recount their stories over a point mm. or two. That sounds interesting. Mm. And, and you know how we found it? How did you find it? Well, we went down to, to, to check out the jail and uh, we happened to have a copy of a paranormal magazine with us and it was going through some haunted pubs and Sue spotted it. And yeah, and we thought we'd go uh, there for dinner. Uh, yeah, why not? We thought, we thought, why we'll not? We'll yeah. have a look. It's not far from here. Yes, why not? Yeah. yeah. It'd be just by luck, actually, because there's all these reputable hauntings and they never let you down until we go and there'll be nothing. You know, <laughs> do you ever find that? Do you ever get, you know, you read up about the venues and you think, oh, this sounds so interesting. You know, they're, they're advertising this is going on and, and reports of this and reports of that. Mm -hmm. So you build up your hype, you know, and, and when you're getting people to go along, and you, you know, uh, your members or the general public can say, well, this is what's reported to happen in there. So everyone's got this built up hype of what they're expecting when they get there. Yeah. And then when you get there, it's like flat as a pancake to a lot of the places. And you think, well, what happened to this headless horseman that was supposed to become coming out the corridor here? You know, but then you go on your own. Ooh, different well, ball game then, isn't it? Just to let everyone know, next week we've got Andy actually on the show. Ooh. Yeah, because um, Andy, see him, no, see him. he's he's just realised how to, how he can upload all these videos and let us see it and clips and stuff like that. Yeah. So he's going to come on and talk about his ghost hunting. Uh, uh, he's timing ghost hunting. And he said, now that I've figured out how to upload the, the stuff, he said, he'll be able, be able to show audio clips and everything. So Sounds good. So that's what he's going to do. And he said, in the summer, he's hoping to come up and be live in the hub. Good old boy. So I said, yeah, no problem. Got a spare yeah. room. Yeah, we've got a spare room if you, you stay the night. So, you know. Cool beans. Save you driving straight back, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Mm. So, when it be half term for him? Summer holidays or whatever. Dave T. Dave T. has said evening all when we're near enough about to say good night. <laughs> Where you been, Dave? <laughs> I don't know. So. Have you ever done the ancient ram in? No. That's, that's a nice it's little place. It's one I've always liked to do. 
Sir John Humphreys is called. I've always guy. liked to do it. Yeah, he's a nice, he's a nice guy. Yeah. I rang him up because he's, I didn't know about the he, bloody place. He's, did the, I? he's the typical English nutcase. Because, <laughs> isn't he? I tell you what, happened. he is. He, he, he is. Very eccentric. He, yeah, he comes out and he, you know when he's there and he's got this baseball cap on with his with his hair that flows out and he's got this mm. baseball cap on. He had, I think it was a red one with something on the front. He has this T-shirt on, a bike jacket on, and spandex pants. You know, and he went on things like that, really. And, and he'll tell you the tale. And, and he's such a pleasant chap, John Humphreys. He's yeah. such a pleasant chap. You know, but he'll talk like, it's micronisms, you see. It's micronisms. And all these orbs are micronisms. You know, I mean, if you're listening out there, Mr. Humphreys, God bless you because you're a star man. But, but that's how he talks, you know. Mm. And, and he'll, he'll tell everybody about the tale and it's about the ley lines that run through. And it's all, all these pictures of orbs and it's all micronisms, you see. Yeah. And he tells you. You know about um, it, he swears blind it's incubus that throw him you know to, that uh, attacked him on his on his sofa because he sleeps on the sofa. Um, but there's a, it's a lot of strange things. You know, it's a weird place. If you ever go there, be aware of people becoming um, kind of uh, violent and anger, a lot of anger in there. And uh, I know that firsthand because it happened to me when I was there and wanting to hit people with candlesticks and things like that. You know. Um, and there was a few people. Well, you know, we used like to do the um, row cross, and we used to do yeah, like a yeah. ghost and roast. Yeah. Well, I didn't know, did I? Ghost and roast. The the old ancient Ram Inn. I thought it was in the name. So when I rang him up, I said, "Do you do meals?" And he went, "We're not open. Yeah. <laughs> it's my house." I went, "Oh well, I thought well, I didn't really know, did I?" Mm. It's a nice place, though. You have to, yeah. you know, have to go. And then he went on to, to, to blame all of us power, power pa- paranormal groups, groups because he was losing his benefit. Yeah. yeah. Because the, the benefit people thought that all the 50s and 60s, 70 pounds that was being charged, he was getting. Yeah. Oh, so he, right. he said, I keep losing my benefits because of you lot. <laughs> well, yeah, so you can make a living doing that, I suppose. Well, you know, but but it's, um, it's such a little, you know, when you look at it, it's, a little, it's very, very... Uh, space is hard to move around in there. It's very hard to move around because he's collected a hell of a lot of things over the years, you know. But nonetheless, it's still interesting when you're there, you know. Michaela, on the, she's been there as well. Um, but you see, I liked it. I'd, I'd go again. Yeah. I would go again. But I suppose you've got to be careful how many people you take because if you, mm-hmm. you know, for space abilities and, and you go upstairs in the bishop's room and and it, you know and it, it'll get he gets this stick and he'll bang on the stick three times on the door. And apparently that's how that's how they uh, tend to the door. You know, and they had a, he's got an ancient grave. But he told us a tale once, and I hope he's not listening in. But he told us a tale, <clears throat> and uh, and then he showed us the artifacts. He said, <clears throat> buried in within the walls here, within the walls, they found an old shoe in the walls. You know, um, and it, it was a shoe of a child. And we thought, oh, that's interesting. And we had a look at it. It said Clark's on it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought, right, okay, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I thought, well, it's a good job it worked for Eamon, Hardy and Willis, isn't it? <laughs> but I'd like to go over back again and see if I can find Reebok. <laughs> you never know. Hon- honestly, you know. Uh, and, and I can't I remember who was telling me. I think it was I think it was uh, Heidi, actually. Yeah. They uh, they went, they did the Remy, and they... Uh, they camped outside for about th- five minutes. And then got then got scared the hell outside the building. <laughs> Packed up, got in the trucks, yeah. and drove home. Yeah, and and, and they didn't they didn't they didn't do the full night actually in the ram either because they got scared. No. Uh, no. Was it was it uh, the ghostly stuff that they were scared of, or was it Mr. was it John himself? <laughs> you never know. It was the Clark you. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, well, this is what they found. This is what was t- 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 Clark. So, you know, you found, oh, oh, okay. And 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 on the bed, right? You go upstairs, and he's got these beds in that things in the bishop room, and and they've got rips, like rips, you know, in the sheets, and he's got little signs that he's written on paper or something. He's put them on the bed, and it says official sta- slash from a sword during a sword fight or yeah. witchcraft, and then and then there's a big sign as you're going upstairs, and it says. Uh, da- uh, so damage caused by fat people, 
or something. It says fat fat women caused it to break or something. He's, yeah. he wrote, it's quite eccentric. He, he, re- he reckons he slept with an incubus or something. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, well, something. yeah, he's got he's got newspaper clippings on his on his bedroom mm. living room bedroom and where his family because his family left him. Yeah. Um, because of it all, where you, you know yeah, incubus attacked down, him. And, yeah, she sleeps downstairs. Yeah, he sleeps on the settee. Yeah, um, and whatnot. You know, and he just leaves you. To, he gives you a tour around and gives yeah. you all the jive and all that. And like I said, he's a very very lovely man. He's such a, you know, you can't help but like him. And, and you, you feel quite sorry for him, you know, but, I mean, he lives there on his own. Yeah. Crikey, you know. But Incubus, um, you know, and I thought, you know, comes and attacks him, does whatever it does, throws him out the bed, and I thought, have you got a phone number? You know, I mean, what's going on? You know, but it's interesting, but he's still there. I mean, any normal person would be gone if that yeah. was the case. Oh, but, yeah. We, we, um, we're in the middle of um, a house clearance, aren't we? Yeah. We was asked to go and have a look at this place. Now, we've gone there. We've done the initial interview. We've recorded stuff, yeah. And when we played back the EVP machine, there's been a little bit of interference on it, oh. like crackling. Oh, right. right. And we've had a word with Tim at Pigs because it's on his recorder. And he said he's, all the while he's used it, he's never known it to happen. Tim at what? Tim Brown at Pigs. At Pigs, and Buster. what was on the voice recorder? It's like a crackling, yeah. Right, an interference. And it only happens once. Right. Yeah. On all the recordings on there, it only happens once. And he said, if it happens again, let me know. Mm-hmm. When we went back to the second time to do the blanket test sort of thing, you know, while we were there, um, we were recording on the recorder again, listening mm-hmm. back to it. There's a crackling noise. Uh, now, okay. he said, it sounds like maybe somebody's got a CB or something uh. and was cre- keying up. But he said, if that was the case, it would be more frequent. So he can't understand it. Now it probably won't crackle as much if you had if you was keying up because you know you'd hear like a static you'd hear like yeah. a. Well, that's what it's like uh, a static thing. That's yeah. that'd be more like, like a like an airway, wave, isn't yeah. it? Like. <coughs> and uh, so basically, um, the, the the story around it is they were getting all this stuff when they moved in, hmm. and then when it was the, the the thing that put the camels back out, so to speak, was. Um, he he was laying in bed and his shadow leaned over him. So he said, "Right, that's it. We're out of here." That was in two thousand and ten. Yeah. Right. He was on about selling it. He couldn't sell it. A friend of his wanted to, to you know, rent it out. They were there about six months and then they left and said, "Did you have any problems here?" And he said, "No." Uh-huh. Right. And they're on about <laughs> moving back in. Now, while we were there, nothing much happened. So I've told him, if you're moving back in, move back in, we might be able to find something when you've moved in. But either that or it's quietened down. Yeah, we did, we did, we did find some stuff, didn't we? Yeah. And we found a, a problem with the boiler, with the uh, EMF. Yeah. It, uh, they had that, a group there, yeah, before us, oh. apparently. And when they came, they got a Ouija board out in their house. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not the thing to do, is it? We are, we are, everybody, we always ask, you know, you always find when you do an investigation in someone's house and they'll say, oh, we don't do the Ouija boards, but sometime down the line they'll say, well, we did do this, you know, Ouija this boards. This was a group that did it. A group that did the a Ouija boards. A group board. that oh, had right. gone in for them. There's a lot of groups out there that are doing the Ouija board and they don't, you know. And in a house, though. It's... It, <sighs> Yeah. That's because I think the groups that are doing it, I mean, no disrespect to the groups out there, but I think, do they actually know what they're doing with it? Do they, is it because they see these on television, because, i.e., certain programs uh, have been shown to do this on the yeah. telly, so, you know, it, I think what it is, the general consensus with the Ouija boards is the majority of people, or everybody that I've ever come across, and other people that, you know, you if you mention it, you know, they're, straight against, they're against it straight away, aren't they? But the Ouija board, it. it's a negative This is just my response. opinion, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, if that's the way they want to work, then fair enough. But in my yeah. opinion, I don't think it's right. I wouldn't subject it, no. I mean, I would have thought if they wanted to work that way, then like you just said, yeah. everybody is entitled to work the way that they want to yeah. work. But 
in their own time and their own investigation, I wouldn't have subjected that to somebody's private home. Oh, no. Certainly not. Because, you know, like I said, the general consensus, if you get 30 people and stand them there mm. and you ask them 30 people, you can guarantee at least 27, 28 of them people yeah. would say, oh, yeah, oh, they'd just say all bad things. What So maybe the board itself or conducting the board might yeah. not be so bad, but the general consensus of the, of the feelings of people, what's what makes it go wrong, or, you know, that's what brings all the negativity about it is people's thoughts on it. Yeah. But to go to someone's house and say, oh, right, we're going to do this, you know, yeah. I th- me personally, I mean, I'll probably get reprimanded for it, but I think it's an irresponsible thing to do. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. a scientific thing to do if you're no. going to help in someone's house. That's Having I... said that, they did pick up on some of the same stuff that we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, some of the uh, unfortunately, they didn't shut the vortexes down because I found four of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, but as I say, you know, so we're going to wait and see what happens after they've moved in. Yeah. See whether it keeps up again yeah. or whatever. We've, uh, yeah, we've got it on a monitor. Yeah, we didn't so. the odd orb, but we didn't find nothing on the filming, did we? And uh, yes, it was a basic tool at one time. <laughs> a basic what was oh. it? The, it was a basic tool well, at that, one yeah, time. It was, this it, is it, but it's a way people game, use it, it though, isn't it? Well, that's it. This is. What I, I mean, we did a podcast on this. Oh. Um, it was some while ago, and it's, you know the thoughts of what. <clears throat> Excuse me, why pe- about the Ouija board and mm. things like that? And like, like PJ just said, there it was a basic tool. But if you get a, an EMF meter, it's a basic tool. If you get a torch, it's a basic tool. Yeah. But it's not the tool itself. It's people's conception of the well, tool. This is it. Put it in another perspective. If you've got an investigation, and somebody's come on that investigation, they've had a bad day at work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've got all this negativity running around them. Yeah. Definitely. And and they go on the Ouija board. <laughs> they go on the Ouija board or they do something on the investigation to which their negativity or whatever or or their oppression for oh, work. For, yeah. yeah. Precisely. You know what I mean? Yeah, be, become so, a meme. You, you get a meme. You know, yeah. like you say, you see, you know, you only have to do you get one bad apple in, a, in, a, in an apple barrel. You only have to have a circle of people sitting around something. You yeah. only have to have one person with that negative impulse. Yeah. And that will spread around, you know. So, like you say, if you if you got your like you like you just been saying a minute ago, if you got a torch, you yeah. give that torch to somebody. That torch will do a job that what you want it to do. Yeah. Um, and that person will get the torch and won't think any different. They'll think safety straight away because yeah. I can see where I'm going. Yeah. So EMF meter. Oh, I don't understand what this does, but it can't harm me. Blah blah blah. But as soon as you mention the Ouija board, even though that probably doesn't do any, anything different than anything else, it's the concept. Oh, oh no, God, no, you could, demons and all sorts could be coming yeah. through the, mm. you know. So because because of their conceptions, they believe that this is what's going to happen, uh, you know, to people, or they've heard negative things about it. So anything negative that does happen to them, which they probably could be bringing on themselves through their own fears, mm-hmm. is automatically down to the tool that they've just been using. Hence yeah. the bad name. Word spreads around. A lot of venues now turn around and say, no, no Ouija boards allowed in here, yeah, you know. This is it. And we don't do it, not because of, you know, people will say, well, why do you do glass divination? Or why do yeah. you do car outs? So, well, because people are more, it's not the negative side. People are so negative about that. But it, we don't do Ouija boards because it's not so much that we think that we're putting people in the danger, but people who might take part in that are, are probably feeling that they're endangering themselves yeah. with their own, their own fears of this. And then they'll be going back home after that. And once they're... Yeah, well, exactly. it's like Lancaster know, Castle. Exactly. You can go and invest at Lancaster Castle, but you cannot do any dowsing. You mm-hmm. cannot use a Ouija board. Yeah. You cannot do anything like You can do a, a seance, you know, like holding hands, but most of it's got to be technical. Like that's, well, that's it. It's because not, they're looking at it, the it, fact that it's, it's connected to the witches. It's, it's, it's yeah. not, not, not just that. It's still owned by the Queen. And it, oh, yeah, it's still and, owned and, by the and Queen And they class well. dowsing and stuff as like witchcraft. that as witchcraft. Yeah. 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 Tuckbury Castle's still royal as well. Yeah. That's, that's royal. But it's owned it, by the same people. That's it, it's, not, it's nothing scientific in that. I mean, no. you, you're not, I mean any, anybody could sit there with a board, pieces of paper, yeah. yes, no, and everything else. And anybody could be... I mean, anything that's manipulatable, like the dowsing rows, the Ouija boards, you can be pushing it, you cannot be pushing it. So some people don't take it seriously when they do it anyway because... You'll guarantee everybody who was sitting around there will each of them believe that somebody else has pushed mm. it. So anything that does happen. So really, if that's what they're going to be doing and think, well, someone else has pushed it, I don't really believe this glass is moving. Why are they doing it? They're just fooling themselves yeah. because nobody's believing any of this is actually going on. Well, but, but, you know, I'll sit outside because just in case they have that reservation in their mind, well, I won't participate. I'll, I'll sort of sit away from it. You guys carry on because they've got that fear about it. 
when it comes to it, mm-hmm. you know. But so you know, but it's not scientific. To me, it doesn't prove anything. It's not scientific based. No. You know, and, and you know, you get mediums and no, this this might be said before. No, this year what we done here. You know, no disrespect to them, but anybody again could just come along and say, "Well, I'm getting the name Margaret yeah. behind you or whatever," and that, you know, I think, "Well, prove it. Tell me, prove yeah. it. Show yeah. me the proof of it." Yeah. So, I mean, if, if we do people's houses, like you just been saying a minute ago, what I I, I do first when we, we'll try to do first is not to go in to find um, the paranormal activity. At, at yeah, at you first. try and debunk it, don't you? Well, yeah, exactly. The, the idea is first to give them people peace yeah. of mind. And security well, in this is home. it. You know, she was saying that. You know, Steve said to her, "Do you get any feeling of dizziness or something when you're in the kitchen?" She said, "Yes, when I'm washing up." Now she's got a boiler just by the side of her, and the EMF that came off that yeah, yeah. was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. When it when it's running, it, it's off the scale. Yeah. yeah, and it goes out to. Two feet away from it, you're still pulling 2.5. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why she's feeling that way. Which is right where, where she's standing. Yeah, I've encountered that. So with it, it affected it the dog. Mm. Well. Mm. He's looking at. Mm. Oh, definitely, you know. definitely, because it's dangerous. It's, 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 well, that's a guaranteed health hazard anyway. Well, this is it. To the health, you know. So. Start so like getting dizzy and disorientated and skin irritations and that's yeah. what I think's going on at our house. And, the and, and it's the last thing you need in the kitchen. This well, de- yeah, definitely. Oh, you know, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. You, you so. Fatigue and all that type of thing. And, it, you know, eventually mm. the, the, the amount of exposure, depending on the amount of exposure and the length of time, can lead to, to sort of cancers and leukemias yes. and so. all that type of thing. Yeah. You know, so. so, well, time's beating us, I'm afraid. Absolutely. Oh, no. So, yeah. Well, it's I'm that a... time again. Well. So, well, thanks for coming yeah, in yeah, anyway. It's, it's been Thank fun. you guys. It has been I fun. I just hope I haven't bored everybody out there to tears. No, but it's been fun. I doubt it. Thanks for coming, Emma. So, I'm doing the observations all again. Right. So, you know, you know, you're always welcome. So, I, th- uh, I think we must be spooky too. Why? Uh, Andy's saying it keep the, the sound keeps freezing, and he said it's it's odd that, it, that it's freezing on it, on both his laptop and his desktop. Yeah, but PJ said it's all right at his end. <laughs> it's, it's all right my end. I can hear it quite quite easy. I, I, I haven't I even got me evil. Well, we're going to leave it at that, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Yes. And um, we'll put the uh, podcast up for you. It's for those who uh, missed it, they can hear it again on Radio Replay. How's it going? Radio Replay. Replay. <laughs> <laughs> Katie and as I say, next week we've... Um, We've got Andy Mercer coming on, talking about his his time in the uh, ghost hunting realm, and he's going to try and get his uh, pictures and audios there for you f- to listen to as well. So please join us for that, and uh, you know you can put your input in and see what he's found. And um, so I don't read out stuff that Dave puts on because I read out something last time. And it's, it's came out a bit weird. <laughs> it, lo- it looks weird the way he's put this. So, last girl I did a Ouija board with ended up moving into my house. Yeah. <laughs> Proof, as far as I'm concerned, they, they attract demons. And <laughs> <laughs> now, now, David. <laughs> I don't know. And Andy said, do you think we weren't even going to bother with the show? This is now my ex. <laughs> <laughs> now my ex. So, well, thanks a lot for joining us anyway, and uh, we'll see you all next week. And uh, Andy, I'll speak to you during the week to sort out about next week's show, if that's okay. Yeah, and who else, Can we, you add who else we got on apart from video Mr. Andy? Pardon? Who else we got apart from Mr. Andy? Just Andy. Just Andy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you add the link to my video to the upload of show I've actually, I've actually put it on the ktpf right okay already. i'll see whether i can it won't be tonight what i'll do is i'll try and uh put it on the end if that's all right with you or i'll try and snip it in somewhere so in that case that the uh, podcast won't go up straight away then and uh, i'll see what i can do all right um as i say it is actually on the ktpf page at the moment is it right yeah. what i'll do is i'll download it and then try and snip it in so okay, and find okay, out okay. where he talks about it, and then and put it in with that it bit. In there. Yeah, okay, Andy, yeah, I'll do that for you. She's gonna cut and snip, and but it won't be until right tomorrow, right. I'm afraid. She's gonna cut so, and snip uh, and put it in the right place. Until next week. This is where it's at. And we'll be talking more about the unknown. So uh, why don't you join us and delve in? Until next time, all that's left to say is together. Keep, keep the power on, my friend. See you guys. <laughs> Good night and God bless. Bye. Bye. To see in the night, to measure the spike, to see how cold it's been. 
I buy my kit so I won't forget the ghosties that I have seen. The Paranormal Intelligence Gathering Services Ghost Store. So visit www.the-pigs.co.uk forward slash ghost store.